following is a special presentation of ESPN College Football on ABC. Shadow of Big Tech, State Fair of Texas. This is the place to be, the Red River Rivalry. I remember even when I was a kid, 1968, I'm 12 years old, second weekend of October. What do you think I'm thinking about? Girls. Not girls, no. I was thinking about You were girls. thinking about girls. I was thinking about football. I'd never seen a wishbone before, but it was James Street running the show. Steve Worst is in the backfield. They had 85 yards to go to beat Oklahoma. They did it, and they won 30 straight games in the national championship the following year. Hey, Grease, what's your favorite memory? Ooh. Mine's a little more recent, 2001. Roy Williams, safety blitz, comes flying over the line. Hits Chris Sims, the ball flutters in the air. Teddy Lehman comes through, intercepts it, takes it into the end zone, the deciding touchdown that year. And in my opinion, the play of the year in 2001. McGuire, what? Your favorite memory. I have no memories, man. I've never done this game. You two guys have done this game, but I know there are a lot of great players that are gonna be in this game today. And tonight about 6.30, I'll tell you about the memory. But right now, don't bother me, man. I'm eating a dog. I mean, no, I don't need that. Come on, guys. Come on. We got to go. Fun's just starting. Time to go to work. The Cotton Bowl in Dallas, half in burnt orange, half in crimson and cream. ESPN's college football on ABC. It's the Red River rivalry between Texas and Oklahoma, brought to you by Best Buy. Welcome, everybody, to Dallas, Texas. I'm Brad Nessler. I'm in the famous tunnel here at the Cotton Bowl. Why is it a famous tunnel? Well, for eight decades, they've been bringing the teams down, and I'm coming down with the Longhorns right now if I can through the bodies. Think about the players that have come through here for Texas. Guys like Nopes and Worcester. Ricky Williams and Earl Camp about Oklahoma. Think about the likes of Vessels, Owens, Sims, and Bosworth. And how about the coaches that have brought teams through here? Got Wilkins things through this tunnel. Stoops and Bitzer also brought national title team. Team in the country. One loss, and here they come. Well, guys, quite a scene. I got bumped around a little bit, but it felt pretty good. That tunnel just reeks of football history. My partners are up in a nice air-conditioned booth. Bob Greasy and Paul McGuire, fellas. <laughs> hey, Paul, you know, if he gets run over, you get to do play-by-play. -play. Wrong, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> these games usually come down to the quarterback play, and both of these quarterbacks today are making their first start in this big classic. Colt McCoy was a blue chipper coming out of high school, has, has done well. Made his, he's making his sixth start of the year. He's done better and better, but he's going to have to do better. For the other side, Paul Thompson drew up 25 miles from the University of Texas. Always wanted to go to Texas. Always wanted to be the quarterback there. Ended up in Oklahoma. Now he gets to come back and play against Texas. He's done very well. In fact, he's the 13th passer, pass efficiency-wise, in the country. Great receivers on both sides, but Paul, what about... The defense for Texas. I tell you, Texas got an excellent defense. They are second in the nation in rush defense. They only allow 36 yards per game. They have 18 sacks. But the problem is, they're playing OU and Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is third in the nation in rushing. He averages 160 yards per game, 5.5 yards a carry, and two thirds of his yardage comes in the second half. I'm going to tell you, we're going to find out today, Bobby. 
who has the better defense, whether it's Texas or Oklahoma. And Bradley, are you still down here in that tunnel? No, Paulie, I had to get out of the tunnel. I was getting killed, but I'm going to turn it over to the fourth member of our team, and I'll meet you guys upstairs. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, I, too, am amid mass hysteria here. When you talk to the players about the best memories of this game, it's not about a win or a play. It is about this environment. There is story tunnel of the Cotton Bowl, you are instantly met by screaming fans revving up a rivalry that's existed here in Dallas since 1929. Texas coach Mac Brown told me this game is different than our rivalries with Texas A&M and Texas Tech because after those games, we go home and we eat with those people and we work with those people. Oklahoma, though, this is a border war. There's a lot more anger and emotion, Brad. ESPN and ABC broadcast available in HD by the Dish Network. Mac Brown in his ninth year as head man, Texas. Winning his active coach for the Big 12 and Bob Stoops with the national championship in 2000, his eighth year. Bob's got the edge right now over Mac in this series. It's the 101st matchup in the Red River rivalry. Oklahoma won the toss and deferred. So Hartley will kick back deep. Texas is going to get a short kick from Selvin Young at about the 13. Broke a tackle. Look out. Young across the 30. 40. Almost to midfield, and there was nobody on the backside to help. And he almost broke it. 33-yard kick return. That'll give great field position to this young man, Colt McCoy. And Colt, what are you planning on doing on the first series? Every team wants to come out and score a touchdown in the first series, so obviously that's a goal. But coming in there, we want to, to set the tempo to be able to run the ball and, and pass the ball effectively and, and see how things go from there. I think Salvin Young just set the tempo out to the 45-yard line. What a great place for the young guy to start. You know what happened is the return was a right return. All of Texas's men went over to block, and Oklahoma followed them, so there was nothing back left. It was just great. To, uh, Selvin Young that did that all on his own, all on his own. Jamal Charles in the backfield on the first snap because of Young's long run. Well, Colt McCoy not only had his pass knocked down, he had his head knocked down by C.J. Ayu. That says hello to the redshirt freshman quarterback right away. Well, McCoy coming in. And this is his first throw. Look at this. I mean, he just gets back in the quarterback's face. And that was Blaylock, number 63. The, the big All-American was trying to block him. And that was McCoy's fault. The tackle was blocking this guy. Had him in good shape. He just shouldn't have drifted out that way. On second and ten. They give it off, Charles, left side, got to midfield, maybe to the 49. As we take a look at our IBM star watch for Texas offensively, the guy McCoy likes to get the ball to, has become quite a wide receiver. Big target at 6'4", and Lima Swede. And defensively, their leader, the strong safety, one of the Griffin brothers in the secondary, the strong safety, Michael Griffin, the leading tackler for the Longhorns. Salvin Young is checked back in now. He got a little bit of grass stain on that number 22 on that kick return. And here's a third and four in Oklahoma territory at the 49-yard line. Oklahoma can be tough in these defensive situations. McCoy, Blitz Cummins, going to go deep into coverage and incomplete. Double coverage over there. Lima Swede was the intended receiver. Marcus Walker, number 24, played it pretty well. So Texas got great field position on their opening drive, but they've got to punt it away. Say it, Brad, this deflates you because you're here, and, and all right, you're not the home team, okay, because <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, you know, you get the ball out to the 47-yard line, and you can't move it at all. Greg Johnson to punts. Stands near his own 37. Back deep is Reggie Smith for Oklahoma. And we saw in the Washington game what Reggie can do on a punt return. Nice high kick. Smith has to call fair catch. And he'll take it at about the 13-yard line. 36-yard kick, but no return. And now the Oklahoma Sooners will take over. And they're led out by Paul Thompson, their senior quarterback, who was a wide receiver in this game a year ago. His plans for number one drive, Paul. 
come out strong, come out aggressive, physical, uh, you know, make, make a statement, a statement drive that, you know, we're coming at you all, all day. And, uh, you know, we, we definitely want to come out and, and score a touchdown on the first drive. We'll see how they do. They're 87 yards away from one. First and 10, Oklahoma. Adrian Peterson, the tailback, of course, number 28 in the eye. And he'll get the call. Puts his shoulder down and bounces out for five, almost six yards. Let's take a look at the Oklahoma offense brought to you by City. And as you take a look at the front wall, some good news back. Matt Clapp, the fullback, back after a three-week absence, and he's the guy that leads the way for Peterson. Malcolm Kelly's become a big play wide receiver for Paul Thompson, and he's very confident in him. And even with Thompson at quarterback this year is really a fill-in for Red Bomar at the beginning of the season. This offense is much better than the offense they had last year. Second down and four. Going to be a quick toss, and it's batted down, and it's... Brian Robinson, and he can do that to you. As you take a look at the Texas defense, I was just going to say, he's one of those guys that comes off that defensive end spot, and he's a guy that can knock down kicks, he can knock down passes, and he can take them the other way if he gets his hands on them. And that's Brian Robinson, and he just did that very thing. Aaron Ross, not only a great punt returner, but one of the leaders in their secondary. He's got two interceptions on the season. And this defense is pretty good. It ranks fourth in the nation in total defense. Third down and a long four now for the Sooners. And the Horns thinking about a blitz. Thompson changes things a bit. Now drops back into the shotgun with Peterson on his left. Thompson over the middle. Knocked down beautifully. And it's the middle linebacker, Rashad Babineau. Both teams fail on third down and four. And Oklahoma's got to give it up. Well, isn't it nice to watch these linebackers that are working? I mean, the linebackers have really knocked down two plays so far in this drive. These two teams just have to settle down. It's a pretty big high, trust me, guys. I got knocked around down there pretty good by the <laughs> Sooner Schooner. We were one I didn't you. know if I was going to get run over by the ponies or the players. I was coaching Paul how to do play-by-play. -play. <laughs> I told you, Aaron Ross, a dangerous punt return guy. He's got three in his career that he's brought back for touchdowns. Michael Cohen to punt, hung it way up in the air. Fair catch taken at the 37-yard line. So Texas didn't do badly on the exchange of kicks. Colt McCoy's first series didn't go too well, but he's got good field position again, and he'll start at the 38 when we come back. You're watching ESPN on ABC. It's uh, one of the greatest uh, games that I've ever been associated or, or seen as a fan because uh, the electricity, the excitement, the atmosphere that exists uh, in that stadium is unbelievable. And people tell me that that have never been there before that go for the first time. Barry Switzer doesn't look like a guy that turned 69 years old this week, he does he? He looks good, doesn't he? He looks great. National championships, three of them, 74, 75, and 85. He ought to look good. He doesn't have any... Thing to worry about. I mean, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have to call plays today. First down at the 38, Texas second possession. Three wide outs for Colt McCoy. He's going to throw quickly out to Lima Swede. Swede makes a move to the inside. Nick Harris, the nickel back, brought him down after a pickup of about five. Let's take a look at the city, Texas offense. When you look at that front wall, a lot of people think it's the best offensive line in college football. Stuttered, Sentline, and Blaylock are all seniors. They're the leaders of that group. And that's a nice feeling for a young quarterback. Fourth in the nation in scoring offense for that Texas group. Second down at five. Selvin Young trying to work his way up the middle, and he got a first down. Right about to midfield, a pickup of seven. Brad, this is a case of where, where a young man, Selvin Young, picks his hole. When you watch him get the ball, watch his feet. He's going to wait. He waits. He cuts to the right. He waits. He sees the hole open back to the left. He waits, and then he picks up the first down. There was a number 22 here in Dallas that played for the Cowboys that did that pretty well for a long time. I, I agree with you. Left side for Young. Got the corner. Cuts it up inside of the 41, and a flag flies in at the end of the play. We might have a holding out on the edge. Casey Stuttered was one of the guys out leading the way. I don't know if he's the guilty party or not. And it is holding. As we take a look at our star watch, our IBM star watch for Oklahoma, a guy that's up for the Butkus Award and one of the best linebackers in college football, 
is Rufus Alexander. And when you talk about star watches for Oklahoma, you don't ever <laughs> go anywhere without talking about number 28, the sensational Adrian Peterson, the number three rusher Holding in the country. Number four of the offense. The penalty is 10 yards and replay second down. That's number four, Sweet. Now watch this. You, you'll see him. It's it's almost a takedown. And, you you know, you really have to call it. The officials are right there on the plate. He doesn't get an opportunity to work on that a lot. He's a wide receiver. He's more out there catching footballs than he is uh, trying to Catch trying jerseys. to block. Catch yeah. jerseys. Grab jerseys. <laughs> they back it up to the 40-yard line. First and 20 now for McCoy. Great rush for Oklahoma. Shovel pass inside to Charles. Jamal Charles does a nice job just weaving around, but there's a flag down on this play as well on the far side of the field. It's offside on the defense, so they'll get five of those yards back. Offside, number 92 of the defense. The penalty is five yards and replay first down. Oklahoma defensively. Oddly enough, CJIU and Larry Burdine are the guys I was going to talk about. One's knocked down a pass and one just jumped off sides. But they're the two defensive ends that would like to cause havoc in the backfield on Colt McCoy today. And this is a group that has had trouble this year playing. They've had trouble with uh, big plays down the field and tackling in the secondary. This group is only 56th in the nation in total defense. As Brent Venables. The co-defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, and he has not been happy with their tackling all year long, as Bob mentioned. First down at 15. Here comes a blitz. Charles cut back across midfield, looking for a blocker. He's got a first down. Great run by Jamal Charles, who was a freshman All-American last year and shows why with an 18-yard gallop. Watch the linemen this way. They're going to come. This is the spread offense. This is one of the plays Vince Young made famous last year. Goes inside, starts. You know, we talk about Adrian Peterson and the running back that he is. Yep. These te Texas has these two young running backs. They're pretty good also. Young and Charles together do the same amount of damage as one guy by himself. Verdine makes up for his offside with a big play. I think a lot of people remember Jamal Charles last year in the 100th matchup in the Red River rivalry. And he took one from the 20 yard line and became the first Texas running back ever to run one this far. Got through Rufus Alexander's would be tackle, got to the secondary and said a goodbye. 80 yards for a touchdown. He may be the fastest guy on the field, Brad. He's a world class sprinter, or at least a Big 12 class sprinter. McCoy on first down to the outside, complete. It's out to Neil Tweedy, the tight end, and a pickup of about two. Well, for uh, Texas, it's uh, spread the load. Colt McCoy is not a Vince Young. He can't do that. And defensively, I mean, for OU, balance the offense. Peterson's got to run some, but but uh, but Paul Thompson's got to also throw some, Paul. Well, yeah, you got to accept the fact that Peterson's going to get his yardage, and that's okay, but don't let somebody else beat you. And if I'm Oklahoma, I'm blitzing McCoy on every single down. What I mean by a blitz, I'm sending at least five people. They have not done that that much. Cedric Dockery is slow to get up, kind of favoring his right knee, but the big guy, all 315 pounds at him, out of Garland, Texas, is going to jog off, and hopefully he'll be all right. Adam Ulatoski has come in to take his spot on the front wall for the Longhorns on a third down and 10. And that's one of those situations, Brad, where that brace that these offensive linemen were probably saved him from serious injury. Yep. So here's a big third down for Texas. They come in 44% on the year of their third down conversions. This will be a big one. As we have nine minutes and change remaining in the first quarter. No score from Dallas so far. Now they're thinking about coming in. Here they come. McCoy got around one guy. Still looking to throw. And he it down to the 21-yard line to Quan Cosby. What a great play. I didn't think he was going to be able to outrun Nick Harris, well, and he did. He's a redshirt freshman. A lot of the times when a, when a young kid does this, it turns out into a big mistake, but he buys some time. Now he looks like he's going to run, and he usually when this happens, so often it's an interception, but he found the guy and got it to him. Big play. 16-yard pickup down to the 21-yard line. 
Play action. McCoy wants the end zone. Now he comes up to his safety valve. Salvin Young out of the backfield, and it's incomplete. Matt Weiner's got an update on Ohio State Forest. Matt? Ohio State the only team to beat Texas this year early in the season Longhorns at four and one the Sooners at three and one second down at ten Texas a blitz coming Selvin Young going and Rufus Alexander finally brought him down but he got to the 15 yard line somehow squirming his way for about six yards Brad this is one of those deals when you look at young you talk about never quitting it's a continuous motion it's not first or second effort it's first effort this guy never stops his feet he keeps turning and turning and turning and he ended up picking up six yards on the play not a particularly fast track here at the Cotton Bowl we were down on the field before the game it's kind of spongy yeah both coaches commented on how the field was not a quick track but it was a little soft Cooper Castleberry, our referee, stops play because it's timeout, Oklahoma. Seven minutes, 52 seconds, a huge third down on this second drive of Texas. Bob Stoops trying to get his defensive troops together. You're watching ESPN on ABC. He's here at the State Fair of Texas. He looks like he's been working out. <laughs> Look at that chest. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Here's a ninth play of uh, the Longhorn Drive. They'll keep it on the ground. Salvin Young, the cutback inside the 10. Touchdown, Longhorn. Well, he's done it the whole first quarter. The cutback gets him 15 yards and the Texas touchdown. And they scored at the home, home side in the Texas fans are all in that end zone, and that's why you hear them reacting so loudly. Great blocking on the left side, Paul. Oh, you know what they did? They, they looked like everything was going to go right. The whole line pulled to the right, and Young just waited a second and cut back to the left. There was only one red shirt between him and the goal line. Greg Johnson's point after is right down the middle. And Texas, a 62-yard drive. Selvin Young, who's been a big star since the opening kickoff. He had a nice kickoff return and an even nicer touchdown run. Longhorns lead by a touchdown. Getting You're watching ESPN on ABC. Well, you look in on the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. It's a 101st matchup. The Red River rivalry, Texas and Oklahoma. With Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, I'm Brad Nessler. On that 62-yard touchdown march, this is third and long, and Colt McCoy, a 16-yard pass play, set up Selvin Young's 15-yard touchdown run. No question the big play on that drive was the young freshman scrambling out of the pocket and finding some time to pick up a first down. Yeah, that was on third and 10, and he got 16. So now Johnson. As the cannon sounds, Adrian Peterson. As a kick returner from the three, and Peterson's got a man to beat. Down the sideline, Peterson cuts back at midfield, all the way down to the 40-yard line. Adrian Peterson has ignited the Sooner Nation. Fifty-nine yards. <laughs> well, that's a great gap right here. Great job by the kickoff return team. One man to beat the kicker. No, well, yeah, it was the kicker. Yeah, but watch this move here. Here's a move that he makes that you don't ever want to see in the film room on the next day. Might be all for naught. That's the problem. There's a flag down. Personal foul on Oklahoma. Personal foul. The flag is way down at the 19-yard line, which is kind of an odd spot if it's a personal foul penalty. To the play. Unnecessary roughness by number 42 of the receiving team. Penalty is 15 yards, and it's first down. That's Rufus Alexander. It's after the play. It's just odd where the flag flew from. That's what I find strange. That's about 40 yards downfield where the flag was. 
Uh, Nonetheless, it's, it's great field position at the 47-yard line. For sure. It was, it's much better for Oklahoma than it was not a, a holding penalty. Right. That would come all the way back. So they'll start at the 48. Number 28 stays right there behind his quarterback. Three tight end set. And it's Peterson on first down. Puts his head down and gets into Longhorn territory at the 49-yard line to pick up a four. Let's get another update. Here's Matt. Steve Smith alone. <laughs> I don't know. Second down and five. Thompson, nice play fake. Fires complete. First down. And it's Joaquin Iglesias. A pickup of 10. Bonnie. Mm -hmm. people are impressed with Paul Thompson's command of the Oklahoma offense. He says that has a lot to do with the coach's willingness to game plan around a lot of the types of plays he likes. A lot of play action, bootlegs, nakeds that get him out to the edge. Now the other thing helps is that Thompson only has two classes, so on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, he's with them helping game plan. That's good strategy. That's a good game plan for Paul. Fifth year senior fumble, but he got back on top of it. Well, he's a fifth year senior, so he can he had, probably doesn't need many classes uh, to take anymore. I mean, you've been there for four and a half years. He was offered a scholarship by Texas. He grew up in Leander, Texas, near Austin, wanting to be a Texas quarterback. And Mac Brown said, you know what? We offered him as a wide receiver, and he's a good one. Well, Vince Young came out the same year. That's he, part of the problem. He'd already signed <laughs> Vince Young, and he promised Vince that he wouldn't sign another quarterback. So he said, Paul, I want you, but I want you as a wide, as a, as a wide receiver. Second down at 13. Let's see what he does here. They'll still hand it off. Let's go in. Well, I was going to say nowhere, but Peterson made something out of it. Back across the original line of scrimmage, where it's going to bring up third down and about nine. Michael Griffin is the guy that got him. You better make sure that you tackle Adrian Peterson. He's never down till he's down. No, no. I mean, that, you know, that's one of those things. Oh, really? Well, yeah, that's really. Because I'll tell you what. He is so strong. It's the yards that he gets after contact are absolutely incredible with this guy. And I'll bet you when he averages 160 yards a game, I'll bet 140 of them are after he's hit. He's a big second half running back as well. Third down and nine. Thompson's going to roll to his left throw on the run, and it's a dart. Perfect pass. First down of the 22 to Iglesias again. 15 yards on third and nine going to his left. Not too bad. Just as the other quarterback made a play, the young freshman, so does the fifth-year senior. Paul Thompson gets outside the pocket and picks up a big, big first down. Here's what he saw. Buys a little time. It looks like he's going to stay in the pocket. Then he rolls. Get the ball further out to the left, though. Could get it out a little bit further left. It almost got picked off. A little critical with these quarterbacks. That's uh, early, man. I'm, I'm, rooting. Early. I'm rooting for the quarterbacks. <laughs> First down at the 22 of the Longhorns. Three tight ends set again. Here's the toss, and the flags fly, and the stops play. George Robinson might have jumped. Part of the snap, a false start by number 72 of the offense. The penalty's five yards. And it's still first down. That it was on George Robinson. Tonight, don't forget, Saturday Night Football features two great matchups. Most of you will see a Pac-10 showdown between Oregon and Cal. Others will see Nebraska and Iowa State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. College football lives here. And college football in this rivalry has lived here for eight decades. They started it here in 1929. The Cotton Bowl became the Cotton Bowl in 1937 after Fairground Stadium was raised out here in the parking lot. Inside handoff, Alan Patrick giving Adrian Peterson a breather, and he gets nowhere. So it'll be second down at 15. Under four minutes in the first quarter. Texas, if you just joined us, Selvin Young had a great opening kick return. They wasted that possession, were forced to punt and it was a three and out for Oklahoma. They gave it back, and then Texas went 62 yards in nine plays in just about five minutes for Mac Brown. That's where we are, 7-0 Longhorns. Peterson back in behind Brody Eldridge. 
the H-back. Play action. Thompson throws on the run. Iglesias had his hand on it and just couldn't hold it. But he's been getting open. Poor Iglesias throw. has caught two already. Just a poor throw by Thompson. He could have got that ball in there. We have not seen Malcolm Kelly do anything yet. He was way down in the end zone, big number four, so keep him on your radar at least. He's Thompson's number one target, but he's 0 for the first quarter. They're out going, of Longview, Texas. Now they're going three wise. They got Manuel Johnson in. Eighth play of the drive. Third down and 15. It's Kelly up to the top of your screen. The four wide receivers set. Actually, the tight ends in a slot on the right side. Thompson's looking that way, and now he's looking to go down. Way back at the 45-yard line. Robinson and Crowder, the two defensive ends, meet at the quarterback. And not only was it a big sack, it took him out of field goal range. You got to get rid of the ball. You cannot take this kind of a sack. They took him out of field goal range into punt position. You just can't take this. You take a look at Thompson. He's just waiting and waiting and waiting. Now that you see the coming, they're coming, throw it. Crowder actually tackled Robinson. You talk about two defensive ends who are hungry for a quarterback sandwich. Mike Nall, the other putter, the pooch putter, if you will, for the Sooners, is in to kick near his own 45. Aaron Ross waiting on it back at about the 10-yard line. Nall hit it a mile in the air. Ross is trying to sift through the bodies, and he's going to have to let it roll, and it's going to take a great Sooner bounce all the way down inside the 11 yard line. Let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Here's the South Division of the Big 12. Texas, Texas Tech and Baylor all undefeated. This is Oklahoma's opening game in conference competition. Texas A&M lost a heartbreaker to Texas Tech last week in the final seconds of the ball game. The North has a surprising team atop the heap. How about Missouri? How about Missouri? Huh? Five and zero for the first time since about 81. Talk now, about big surprises. I mentioned Nebraska will be on Saturday Night Football that some of you will see tonight. So now Colt McCoy is not quite as comfortable. That's a sooner end. It's a little noisy. Trust me, I was standing down here for about 20 minutes. And Charles is dropped for a loss. So Colt McCoy in a little bit of a tough spot, but for him, wearing that number 12 and burn orange and white's a dream come true. It's fun. It's a dream come true. You know, growing up, there, there's a lot of kids in this state that would love to play quarterback at the University of Texas. So, so God has really blessed me. He's put me in this position. Uh, he's given me the ability to be able to play here, and, and it's just fun. His dad was his high school coach in Tuscola, Texas. But he's actually from Buffalo Gap, which is kind of a suburb of Tuscola. So you go from about 700 people to probably a couple of hundred. <laughs> it ain't very big. It ain't very big anyway. How about this for a name? Is Colt, does that fit all right? I like that. Colt. Colt McCoy. You go down into Texas, and you head out to West Texas, and you find Tuscola. And then right over there by that is Buffalo Gap. <laughs> Buffalo Gap's got like one turn. The town square is a circle. It's kind of small. <laughs> Uh, he was a good one there, and he's already a good one here. Well, he's a gym rat. He just, uh, he always hung around. He's always bugging the coaches. Uh, what do we do with this? Can I come by and can I do some more studying? Can I look at some more film? They love it. Third down at four. From the gun, quick throw, knocked down. DJ Wolf, who's kind of had a rough beginning of the season, <laughs> he just got <laughs> just got roughed up by one of his teammates. Had a too. rough game. <laughs> It's Pendleton just knocked him over. <laughs> and tonight, don't forget college football on ESPN. Eric Ainge in Tennessee go in between the hedges against the Georgia Bulldogs. College football primetime, 745 tonight. College football lives here. All those games available on ESPN and ESPN2, available in a high definition. And that'll be Joe Tereshinsky returning to the starters role for the dogs tonight. The third generation senior Bulldog against Eric Ainge in a red hot volunteer offense. That'll be a good game. There's Reggie Smith. To the punt. Again, way up in the skylights. Reggie makes a diving catch. He saved his team some yardage. <laughs> it was gutsy, but he caught it at the 48-yard line. Good field position for Oklahoma. 
Reggie Smith, he'll play a little bit of everything. They'd like to get him more involved as a wide receiver on offense, but uh, he's played everything. Cornerback strong safety is the starter today. He's their punt returner, kickoff return man, and he's playing some wide receiver, both the flanker and the slot spot, so he's a fiver. And he's already had a 62-yard punt return this season. So, uh, we uh, saw that one yeah. firsthand. Yeah. The good news for Washington, they hit an 82-yard punt. The bad news, Reggie took it 62 the other way. <laughs> you remember that one, though? Yeah, I do. Final 15 seconds, first quarter. Play action. Thompson might want everything here. He's going deep. Scott Kelly out there. Jump ball and broken up. Didn't get it out and far in front of Kelly as he would have liked. You're right. And Aaron Ross was there. You're exactly right, Brad. Uh, you know, that just comes with inexperience at the quarterback position. Paul Thompson, if he gets this ball more to our right across the field and lets Kelly run for it, he has to stop and wait. That allows Ross the time to get back and knock it down. So they went for the big play after the exchange of punts, and now they got a second down and 10 on what might be the final play of the first quarter. Iglesias in motion. Adrian Peterson, left side. Oh, man. He took a hit, and he still got positive yardage, but the ball came out. Did, did Texas get it? They did. The Griffins are back there. I think one made the hit and one made the recovery. Marcus with a hit, and Michael said, thanks, bro. I'll take it. Well, I tell you, you want to talk about unloading on someone? Adrian Peterson figured, well, I could break a tackle and then keep right on going. Well, Marcus Griffin said, I don't think so. He nails him. The officials now may be going to take a look at this. If it's a fumble, it's the first one by Adrian Peterson in the last 112 times he's handled a football. Let's take another look. All right, is he, is he on the ground? The ball hits nope. the ground with his hand. Yeah, that's not a fumble. His hand's on the ground. Then the ball comes out. And then he got crunched even worse. It was Marcus Griffin right there, number 26. Peterson going down with his left wrist, and then the ball comes out. And then it was recovered by Michael Griffin. We're going to take a break, and we're going to find out what the officials think about this one. Big play, one way or the other. AD looking on, hoping it's not a fumble. End of the quarter. Texas in front. 7-0 in the 101st Red River Rivalry. Welcome back to the Cotton Bowl. College football is here. The Cotton Bowl has seen Adrian Peterson fumble first time in the last 112 touches. So the officials looked at it, determined that the call they made on the field stands, and Texas gets a big break. The Griffins, one with a hit, one with a recovery. And now Colt McCoy in the offense working from the 37-yard line. Maybe an end around coming. Given a lot of ground, Billy Pittman, and he goes down way back at about the 30-yard line, a loss of about seven. So, fellas, good first quarter for Texas especially, and Selvin Young in particular, and uh, Colt McCoy made some nice plays. Well, you know, Adrian Peterson... We're going to see a lot more of Adrian Peterson. That fumble, which I didn't think it was a fumble because the ground caused the funnel popped up. We'll see a lot more of Adrian Peterson. Well, the nice part about Adrian Peterson, just keep it in mind, he actually touches the ball 18 times on four, first down in every single game, an average of 18 times. He's got, the guy's going to get 100 and some yards, I'm going to tell you now. Well, yeah, he'll get his yards, and he gets most of them in the second half. But the fumble now has given Texas a golden opportunity here. we got a man down on the field, and it's... Dockery, who was having trouble earlier with what looked like his right knee, and now it's not working for him. He had come back in, and Big Cedric is going to be helped off to the sideline. Dockery's one of the young guys on that line because they've got Blaylock, the senior, on one side, who's sensational at right tackle, and then Sendline and Stuttered are the anchor inside, and they really like Tony Hills, the left tackle. So that front five, uh, arguably, one of the best lines in college football, and they've just lost one of their starters. And those three guys you talked about, the seniors, they all believe, and everybody does, that all three of those guys will be in the pros next year. Mm -hmm. They're that good. Mm -hmm. 
So again, it's going to be Ulitoski who's going to take the spot, big number 74 right there. Yeah, you switch up the line. Yeah, Ulitoski goes in at the right tackle, right. and the right tackle, Blaylock, kicks down the right guard. Second down and 17 for Colt McCoy and the Longhorn offense. Oklahoma comes with a straight rush again. McCoy flushed, almost sacked. He throws incomplete. And Lima Swede, the intended receiver, again, McCoy avoided the rush just enough to get the throw away. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, Brad, there's somebody here who knows Colt McCoy's football skills probably as good as anybody. That'd be his father, Brad. You coached him all the way through high school. What was your first memory of, of hearing that Colt wanted to go to Texas? Well, we, we've been Texas people all of our lives, and, and, you know, he's been to several camps, and I remember when he was a freshman, went to one of Coach Brown's camps, and when we left, he just looked at the stadium and said, this is where I'm coming. If I have the opportunity, this is where I'll come. Back to Mr. McCoy after this play, Brad. His son right now, third, uh, third and 17. Long yardage situation. Shovel pass to Young. Selvin straight up the middle, back to Bonnie. Just remember seeing him in those camps and saying, yeah, we thought he was a skinny kid. He might be good for some other school, but not ours. At what point did you see him develop enough that he could make it in the Big 12? Well, when he was a junior, we went and played for a state championship, and, and uh, we had a lot of good players with him, and, and he just started to evolve into something really special. Uh, and, and we saw Coach Brown later on, and, of course, they offered him in, that, in the winter of that year. So we knew that there were some good things happening, but he's worked tremendously hard to get where he is today uh, from where he came from in high school. Brad, thanks so much. Mr. McCoy, you've done a good job with him. Here's a punt. Reggie Smith trying to reverse his field, looking for some blockers. Reggie looking for a crease. Got one and then got tagged and the ball's out. I think Oklahoma got it. I think they got it back, but what a shot Smith took. I think it was Eric Jackson, number 21, who is on the punt team. There is some hitting going on in this ball game. Ooh. Well, it's going to come back over this way. Now, here's where he goes. He really thinks he has an opening. Watch what happens. Boom. Bam. Ouch. That's Jackson. What a hit. They kept the football, though, at the 26-yard line. Here's another angle. <laughs> Hello. Didn't have time, once he got through that one crease, to, to really gather himself and get prepared for the next hit. Well, can Texas defense shut down Adrian Peterson? They forced him to fumble already once. We'll see when we come back. That's the kind of thing that's happened at Georgia Tech at times after a big win. This is ESPN on ABC, brought to you by Best Buy. It's the Red River rivalry, Texas and Oklahoma, for the 101st time. Texas on the board on a Selvin Young 15-yard touchdown. We've got 13-29 remaining, and Oklahoma's lucky they've got the ball after the collision on the punt return by Reggie Smith a moment ago. But they maintain possession and work from their own 26-yard line. Here's Adrian Peterson, and he goes down immediately. Brian Robinson has had a heck of a game so far. In the Big 12, this is not the only big game. Texas A&M beat Kansas by three. And it's Kansas State leading Oklahoma State. We mentioned Nebraska and Iowa State. A lot of you will see that one tonight. Colorado, 7-3 on Baylor. And Missouri, the surprise team at 5-0, playing Texas Tech later on. Here it's for... The front spot in the Big 12 South and the inside track usually to the Big 12 championship. Second down and 11. Play action. Thompson throws it into a crease to Joe John Finley, his tight end, and he rumbles all the way into Longhorn territory. There's a flag on his play back at the line of scrimmage. Pass interference on Oklahoma. Oh, and Bob Stoops isn't happy. If they call this on Joe John Finley, what he does, he's at the top side. He's gonna, what he's gonna do is go out and stop and push off. He pushes off there. Now he releases a look and he's wide open. Up the middle, I mean, it's hard to cover a guy when, when you get your back to him and then he pushes you away. Here's for number 19. Of That's the him. The penalty is 15 yards. And replay second half. We got a true Joe John. <laughs> Bob loves those you get some. Names. You get some of those uh, in Texas and in the South. <laughs> Billy Bob? <laughs> those Joe uh, John. Yeah, Bobby Joe. 
Bob Stoops is unhappy after watching the replay. And Bob has reason to be ha unhappy with officiating this year for a couple of things. Yeah, I agree with you, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But you mean to, you're talking about out in Oregon, but that I look like some just some hand fighting between the defensive guy and the offensive guy just to get away one from the other. Happens about every play. Second down, 23. Thompson now worked from the shotgun. That was a huge play right there. They would have had it down at the Texas 47-yard line. Now Brandon Walker with a false start, I believe, on the right side of the line, and they're going the wrong direction now. Number three of the offense. Penalty is five yards, and it's still second down. There, there are only two seniors on that offense for Oklahoma, and there are seven sophomores. So this is a very young offense for Bob Stoops. The field judge is getting an earful. And Bob's still not done. Well, that was a huge play. They're backed up inside their 10. They would have been out near the 50 or maybe into Texas territory. They were almost to the 45 of Texas. That's Finley in motion. Thompson's going to throw it to him. And he is met head-on at the 10-yard line. And his helmet, I'm just glad his head wasn't in it. Terrell Brown put the shot on the tight end. These are all classic defensive hits. Watch number five. You want to see something beautiful? Here's a catch, the turn, and down. Boy, you talk about putting your helmet right in his chest. It's only beautiful if you're not Joe John's parents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful if you're a defensive player. Oh, man, yes. Third nothing, down and a mile. Ain't nothing pretty if you're an offensive guy. Paul Thompson's got to be careful here now. Going to roll to his right in his own end zone. Look out, Paul. Throws it in the vicinity of more Longhorns than Sooners and now they're going to have to punt and they don't have a lot of room to work with. So now it's going to be a tough spot to punt from for Michael Cohen. And keep in mind on the other end is a guy that has got big time speed in Aaron Ross. And the guy that made the hits it's Brown is the guy that's down. Did he not make it to the sideline? I didn't even notice that. He went pretty much head to head with Finley on uh, the previous play. Brad, I know you probably mentioned it, but it is a very hot day down there. This uh, unusual for this time in October. I don't think I've seen Bob Stoops that animated for that long a time in all the games we've done. It's about 100 degrees down there on the field. And now Cohen will be kicking deep in his own end zone. So you look from behind him. Let's see if Ross has a chance. Nope, fair catch. Taken at the 45 yard line. Great field position for the Longhorns. We talked about Bob Stoops being upset. I think you have to go back to Oregon and the game they lost, which would really make you upset if you're a head coach. Here's the onside kick by Oregon. And watch, it does not travel 10 yards before it's touched by an Oregon player. On top of that, when the ball came out of there, it was subsequently recovered by Oklahoma. That's one, two problems on that play. And unfortunately, then there was two more problems on a pass interference call on a ball that was tipped. And so Bob Stoops talked with us about it the other day, and we asked him, do you think near the end of the season the pollsters are going to start considering the fact that maybe all should be undefeated? And he said, that's not for me to say, but I think some people are going to make their own conclusions. Flag down on the play. And Cooper Castleberry with the call. Holding number 62 of the offense. The penalty is 10 yards, and it's still first down. That'll take Texas back into their end of the field. But to kind of wrap up the Oregon game, and guys, you help me out on this one. Greece, you can take the pass interference. Right here. Ball's tipped. Linebacker right there tips the ball. That was reviewed, and the, the replay official did not overturn that one either. So the replay official had plenty of opportunities to over, override 
the, the calls that were missed on the field and for some reason didn't do it. Texas not getting a lot of first downs recently, but this guy got him their touchdown. Selvin Young cuts it outside. Nice job of pushing him wide and out of bounds at the midfield stripe by Reggie Smith. And the reason we bring this up, Texas lost to Ohio State. So, okay, here's a Texas team that's number seven in the country. They lost to the number one team in the country. There's no shame in that. Te Ohio State was a more experienced team this year. Texas was last year. Oklahoma lost a game they shouldn't have lost to Oregon. They would be 4-0, and oh, and this would be a battle of top ten teams because this is the first time in seven years that each team's come in with a loss into this game. They come in ranked 14th, does Oklahoma, where they would have been ranked in the top ten. At midfield, second down and 15. McCoy wants to throw a screen, and he's not going to find a place to do it. They drag him down way back inside the 35-yard line. Stephen Coleman and Corey Bennett, the guys chasing him down, a loss of 15. Stephen Coleman, you know, you talk about linemen. They only get a few shots a year. And here's a chance right now for number 90 to stay with the quarterback and this is hard duty. This is a big man. Watch him, watch him get himself lined up, keep his feet. He gets his hands on the quarterback, no face mask, and brings him down for the sack. That's an outstanding play. Yeah, but the only reason he got the sack is because the man he was wanting to throw the ball to had a bunch of defenders around, defense around him. Including Corey Bennett, the other tackle. The other tackle. <laughs> Galvin Thibodeau. Makes the stop, and Texas doesn't do anything with that series. In fact, they went backward. They started in Oklahoma territory. Can I ask a question here? Is he going to defend a quarterback the entire game? Got, huh? I've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> There's the burnt orange on the left and the crimson and cream on the right. The Cotton Bowl split right down the middle. Johnson to punts. Hangs it up. Reggie Smith, late fair catch call and flag down. I think the Texas defender was pushed into Reggie, though, it appeared to me. That's what he's saying. That was Ryan Palmer. It that's looked like he, he was trying to get out of the way. That's what he said. Well, also, Reggie Smith moved over towards him, and Palmer was being blocked. They've really got to take a hard look at this. They can't call a penalty on this play. The tackler was blocked into the there man. You go. There There's you go. no foul. So that's a call, and that's the correct one. There's Reggie, the late fair catch. One guy bails right out, here. and then the other tries and can't quite do it. And there came the flag, but they're going to pick it up. Oklahoma's got the ball at the 25. Adrian Peterson has already fumbled once today. Only has 25 yards on five carries. I don't know if Texas can hold him down too long, though. Stick around. We'll find out together. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Just watching that ride the last three days made me nauseous. <laughs> Adrian Peterson. This will make him sick, too. Only 25 yards on five carries so far. And... Not much in any area, left, right, or up the middle. He did have a great kick return, though, that the Sooners wasted, a 59-yarder. Thompson, play action. Wide open. Wide open. Gresham, the tight end, all the way to the 33-yard line. Bob, they went with three tight ends on this play. They've had three in there most of the game, in fact. Gresham, the, uh, the true freshman that they uh, haven't thrown too much this year. He only caught two passes. Gets down there, makes a nice play. Gets, gets Oklahoma out of their own uh, end zone area and down the field. Bob, what a difference it makes when you fake to Adrian Peterson. Yeah. I mean, it freezes a whole lot of people. First down, first down especially. Here's the toss now. Peterson got a bit of the corner. Got it cut off as he got inside the 30-yard line. Let's check our Aflac trivia question this week. Adrian Peterson's chasing the school record at Oklahoma for most rushing touchdowns. Who holds the record? I'll tell you in a second or a little later. So Peterson, a lot of people feel this is his final matchup against Texas in the Red River rivalry. Only a junior, but obviously 
The National Football League has watched him very closely since his freshman year. Here he comes again. There he goes. Breaking tackles. Peterson inside the 10. Diving. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Oh, boy. shows you what he's capable of, fellas. He's got such great strength. And when you see him, he looks at the hole. He's got outstanding blocking. But look at him maneuver through the hole. His legs are going every which way, but you hit him one time, and if you don't take him down, he's got six. It is, it is, it is, he is one of the best in the nation at, at breaking tackles. I think they're going to take a look and see if he had possession of the ball when he crossed the goal line. Yeah. yeah, walking all the way down to the other end. We'll get a different angle for you. Look at that. One block, two broke, two broke tackles. And then he thought about a stiff arm and said, you know what? I'm just going to run and dive. Oh, he's got it in both hands when uh, it crosses the goal line. There's no question. Bring it on back, boys. Put six up and kick it. It shouldn't take very long. All you have to do is break the plane. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. There we go. Just break the plane of the goal line with the ball. Well, we said could Texas keep him bottled up forever? Answer, uh-uh. <laughs> he, is, he is one of the best, if not the best, in the country at breaking tackles. And we've still got the second half to go, so you won't want to go away. Adrian Peterson gets 63% of his rushing yards in his career in the second half. And 64% of his career touchdowns in the second half. And Mac Brown agreed with Bob Stoops. The great ones get better the longer the game goes. Extra point by Hartley is good. We're dead even. Seven minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the first half. The All-American who finished second in the Heisman balloting as a freshman and had an off year, if you will, after missing about four games with a bad ankle, including most of this game last year. His ankle looks pretty good today in 2006. Now he's got 59 yards and a touchdown. 7-7, seven, seven, Oklahoma and Texas. And on ABC. 75-yard drive, number 28, capped it from 29. 7-7. Seven, seven. Here in Dallas, what a special player and what a special run. Garrett Hartley will tee it up. Juan Cosby and Salvin Young, the dual return men, wait back on that end zone where both touchdowns now have been scored. One into friendly fans and one by Adrian Peterson a moment ago. There wasn't a lot of cheering. Deep kick, they'll touch it down five yards deep, and that's where Texas will work now. They'll come out to the 20-yard line. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac uh, trivia question. Adrian Peterson's chasing the school record for the most rushing touchdowns. Aflac. There goes our duck, <laughs> and there goes the question. And who holds the record? Well, he was a pretty good one, too. One of four Heisman Trophy winners for the Sooners, number 36, Steve Owens in 69. The Heisman winner, 57 rushing touchdowns. Hello. Not bad. Hello. First and ten. Texas hasn't had a first down except on one of their five possessions. They've gone four without Colt McCoy to throw. And he's got a man open out in the flats, Jamal Charles. And Charles goes out to about the 28-yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, we obviously know what type of damage Adrian Peterson does on the opposition. Now he's been doing it lately against his teammates. We talked earlier about how coordinator Brent Venables hasn't been happy with the Sooners tackling. And he says part of it's because the scout team offense hasn't been able to give us a real sense of speed. So they've been doing a lot of ones-on-ones, -on -ones, first team against first team. Linebacker Zach Latimer told me, yeah, he's a highlight reel during the week, too. And you don't want to get caught up in that because the joke's on you then. <laughs> no doubt about that. McCoy keeps it. That's something Vince Young would have done a lot of last year. And very little game. Calvin Thibodeau, the defensive end, with a stop. You know what I really like about watching Oklahoma on defense? And, and, and Texas is doing basically the same thing. These linemen are staying home. 
They're not doing something they're not supposed to do. And they know that these guys can run, and when they go to the other side, wait, just wait, they'll come back. With Bob Greasy and Paul McGuire and Bonnie Bernstein, if you just joined us, it's 7-7 here in the Red River rivalry. Texas and Oklahoma, Salvin Young with a touchdown, Adrian Peterson with a touchdown moments ago. And now third and three for the Longhorns. Long throw to the sideline, and Pittman's not going to get to the first down marker. Great play by Nick Harris, number five, and he wears an apropos number. He's the nickel back, and he's playing a lot today, and he's playing very well. Coming up tomorrow, join ABC as some of the PGA Tour's best tee it up for the final round of the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Texas has had the ball six possessions, and five of the six have been three plays and punt. Four straight three and outs, including this one, Greg Johnson to kick. Reggie Smith waits on the other end. Reggie's going to get his hands on one of these. Not this one, though. They'll have to have it, let it go, and it'll uh, roll dead inside the 20-yard line. So a pretty good kick again. 52 yards with the roll, in fact. And Oklahoma having scored a touchdown on their last series. Let's see. Maybe they need some corn dogs for energy. Bob Goodrich, our producers, had about 14 of those in the last three days. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Without anybody saying anything, without anybody controlling it, once you go through that gate, the talk just kind of hushes down and becomes whispers. Right? And they start getting their game face on from the time they enter the gate. Darrell Royal, head coach, stadium named after him in Austin, national champs in 63, 69, and 70, and Mac Brown won the national championship, of course, last year. This is the 30th anniversary of the famous spy game. Coach Royal and Barry Switzer walk down the tunnel over here to our right, and they walk down with Gerald Ford, then the president of the United States. Neither one would say anything to anybody. They came out of the tunnel. Somebody from Oklahoma yelled, who are the two guys with Switzer? <laughs> Didn't know the president. Here's a run by Peterson. He's going to be trying to reverse his field, and he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Lost about a yard. The spy game was something that started back in the 70s, where Coach Royal started thinking that Barry Switzer had spies at his practices. It all came down to a game they had about 72 when they had a quick kick on third down. You don't quick kick much. And the Oklahoma defense was ready for it. They said, quick kick, quick kick, quick kick. <laughs> Barry says in his book, Bootlegger's Boy, he was right. Darrow was right. I spied. About a week ago, he said, I just said that to make him feel better. We didn't spy him. <laughs> yeah, now who do you believe? I don't know. <laughs> the legend lives. That's right. That's what it's all about. Here's Adrian Peterson in the 2006 edition of this rivalry that goes back 101 times. Great players who have played here, obviously. We mentioned a lot of them at the beginning of the ball game. You just saw Steve Owens on our AFLAC. Guys like Tommy Novus and Earl Campbell. Ricky Williams, Oklahoma with the guys like Billy Vessels, Bob's old buddy, Billy Sims, Steve Owens, Brian Bosworth, and then the coaches. We mentioned the four that have won national titles between these two programs. A lot of history. Not a lot of love. Third down and four. Movement right guard move. Brandon Walker, second time false start for Brandon today. By number 73 of the offense. The penalty's five yards. And it's still third down. A reminder again tonight, two great matchups. Most of you will see a Pac-10 showdown between Oregon and Cal. Cal playing very well since they lost to Tennessee in the opener. Others will see Nebraska and Iowa State. Check your local listings. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. College football lives here. We're living right behind Paul Thompson and over in the corner of the end zone. Third down and long, third and nine. Finley, the tight end in motion. Here comes a blitz. Thompson throws complete. Manuel Johnson's got a first down out across the 40 to the 41. A 21-yard pickup on third and nine. That's a great throw by Thompson. He's had some opportunities to make some throws and has missed them, but this time he's on target. And another big first down, getting him some good field position. You know what's really neat about that? When you look at it, Thompson go back to throw, the whole left side of the offensive line opened up and gave him a lane to throw the ball in. And it was a perfect throw. Another one of the Texas natives on the Oklahoma roster, Manuel Johnson out of Gilmer, Texas. Yeah. 
Peterson end around to the same guy. Johnson looking for a block. Broke one tackle and another. And he's out to midfield and he's almost got a first down. In fact, he might. To the 49 yard line of the Longhorns. So Oklahoma's got something brewing again. I think these guys on this football team, everybody on this football team, Bob, they're looking at old Adrian run the ball. We, did you know this one? No players from Oklahoma on the Texas roster. 40 players from Texas on OU's roster. There's just a few players down there in the state of Texas. Oh, for sure. 90% of the players on Texas the roster comes from the state of Texas. Second down and short. Play action. Thompson's got a man wide open on the out, and he's got him in perfect stride. Iglesias dropped the ball, but it goes out of bounds. It's going to be a first down, Oklahoma. He spit the ball out somewhere around the 20-yard line. Marcus Griffin actually forced the fumble, but it's not going to cause any problems for the Sooners. Just in having the running back to play action, Iglesias is behind everybody. It's a good throw and a good catch and a nice play by the defensive guy. What is that, uh, Michael Griffin? Griffin. Michael Griffin. Both Griffins are there. All right. Michael is the guy that's shaken up on the play. And he's trotting off or trying to. He's their big play guy back there at strong safety. Yeah, it'd be tough to lose him in that secondary. No doubt about that. Five career interceptions. He's blocked seven career punts. And he's got his little baby brother, about two minutes younger than him, <laughs> playing on the free safety <laughs> side. They don't look like twins a lot, do they? They don't. And Michael was a scholarship uh, recruit, and Marcus was a walk-on. Robert Joseph comes in to take Michael's spot at strong safety. And now the official the stop play. The play is being reviewed. Well, it was obviously a catch. And I'm not quite sure what the problem would be. Maybe the spot of where the ball went out of bounds or where he lost control of it's the only thing I can think of. It was when it was fumbled, the ball went forward. And yeah, I don't think you get that yardage. Now, here it comes here. Watch. The ball is, is hit there, and then it goes forward. There's no control by Texas on the ball. The ball goes forward. There was about a four-yard gain probably. Well, they already did bring it back. They brought it back they're, to the They're just checking line. to make sure they got the right yard line, yeah. I think. Yeah, he, he announced they're bringing the ball back to the 20-yard line. Uh, you know, it just, it, it is not amazing, but it's fact. It, 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 it just, when, when you fake to, to Peterson, here goes There's the ball a great out of bounds. There's okay. a great angle. Let's That's out at the 17-yard line. The ball was fumbled at the 23, not the 20. The ball will be placed there, and it's first down. All right, so they got it right. That's what they were looking for is a yard line, and they bring it back about six yards from where it went out of bounds, back to the 23. Either way, Oklahoma will take it. A big play for them and a first down. Now near the red zone, not quite in it, with two minutes and one second remaining in the first half. Brad, what I was talking about was, was Adrian Peterson. What a, what a job just by faking to him what it does to the entire defense. You're seeing receivers going out after a fake to Peterson, and there's nobody around him. The reason the linebackers and the safeties at the line of scrimmage. They've got the three tight ends set again in there, and keep your eye on Malcolm Kelly up to the top of your screen. He's still been shut out. Bob will circle him for you. There's number four. And he's out there with Aaron Ross. Right now it looks like single coverage, but you can't see the whole field. First and 10 at the 23. Oklahoma trying to get more points. They have the last touchdown. And here's Adrian Peterson spinning his way down to the 15-yard line. Terrell Brown made the stop. We've got an update on Michigan. They've been playing very well. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. Here, second down to two, Oklahoma at the 15-yard line. Peterson, nothing doing this time, no game. Scott Derry, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Michael Griffin is back in there after going out for a play. So that'll put the twin Griffins back there at safety. And that's good to see. Third down, a big one coming up here, guys. It's uh, one of those situations where you know they're maybe thinking, you know, we're going twice here. I mean, Bob's, Bob's angry enough to. <laughs> well, that's the decision that he makes and tells the offensive coordinator, Kevin Wilson, 
So he knows that going into this play and this play call. We'll find out what his decision is in a minute. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. On the only touchdown drive for Texas on third and 10, Colt McCoy rolls out, throws back across his body for 16 yards to keep the drive alive, and then Selvin Young does the deal from 15. That made it 7-0 Texas. But Adrian Peterson came back a sensational 29-yard run in the dive into the end zone. That's where we're tied right now, seven apiece. But Oklahoma is looking for more with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Oklahoma only has one timeout remaining. Peterson, 73 on 11 totes so far. They've had some success with the two and three tight end formation, Brad, with Peterson in there. Texas worries about loading it up and then carrying it, giving the ball to Peterson, and then throwing the ball down the field has worked very well also. They've got all the tight ends in again with Peterson the tailback in the eye. Finley the motion man on third down and two. Peterson slipped. Took himself down. It's fourth down. Boy, he saw, Brad, he saw that hole open up. And he said, I got to get there now. And when he goes, watch his feet. He, he trips over the quarterback yep. is where he does. Paul Thompson trips him up. Or he's got it in the hole. And he might have scored. And this is the quarterback's fault. You never want to be so close to the, to the uh, ball carrier with your feet. You always want to get away from him and reach with the ball with your hand. Never trip him up with your feet. They're going to let this clock run down and then kick the field goal. Down to 10 seconds. And now the timeout taken with about eight seconds remaining by Bob Stoops on the sideline. Final so timeout. Oklahoma's final timeout as they look to try to get the lead for the first time today. You know that Coach Stoops uh, talking to Adrian knows what happened down there on that particular play. Let's check in with Bonnie. We've talked so much about this rivalry, Brad, and somebody's got great perspective as to who this game's more important to is Mac Brown because he's been on both sides. He was Barry Switzer's offensive coordinator for Oklahoma back in 1984, and he said when he first got the job, he said, Coach, what do I need to do to keep my job? And without even beating an eyelash, he said, you got to beat Texas. That's true, and he hadn't been able to do it for five straight years until they got that big monkey off his back last year, and that propelled him to a national championship. A lot of people ask whether or not Mac and Bob get along, and Bob says, hey, you know, I hang out with the guys that used to coach with me, Mike Leach and Chuck Long and Mark Mangino and those kind of guys when we go to functions that have a lot of coaches. He said, you know, Mac and I have nothing against each other, but he wants us not to like each other. Personally, we just don't go out to dinner together. Let's right. face it. That's well put. We're not, we're not enemies, nope. but they're not best of friends. Right. So, Garrett Hartley, the junior out of South Lake, Texas, will try a 35-yard field goal. Hartley, 9 out of 10 so far on the season. Hayes McKeecher, whose mama and daddy both went to Texas, is the holder. Hartley from 35 on the way, and he tucked it inside the left upright. Oklahoma leads for the first time today. So the Sooners, 10 unanswered points. And since that drive that netted Texas a touchdown, their offense has been sputtering, to say the least. Texas scored a touchdown in the final two minutes of the first half in every game. I don't think with four seconds left, that's going to be a situation here. <laughs> if they put this ball in the air, they're crazy. Yeah, the clock stops, remember, when your foot hits the football this year. So that field goal ends a 63-yard drive and in five and a half minutes. And I think more importantly, Brad, for this ball game, the momentum going into halftime is certainly with the Sooners. No doubt. They've scored on their last two possessions on long drives down the field. And as we mentioned, Texas, on five of their six possessions, have punted yep. after only three plays. Longhorns have 80 total yards. 67 of them came on their touchdown drive. So they haven't done anything since. They just don't look as fast as Oklahoma. They, when they came out in the first series, they looked kind of fast. Now they don't. So Hartley will kick, and you don't expect that he's going to put it any place where Quan Cosby or Selvin Young can touch it. There's Selvin. He's had a couple big plays, including the touchdown today, to open our scoring. 
If this kick gets above six feet in the air, I'll be shocked. Uh, it didn't get anywhere. And it's basically a live ball. Texas covers it. And that will end the first half. As the cannons sound, we've played half of the 101st matchup between Oklahoma and Texas in the Red River rivalry. And the Sooners have scored 10 straight points after being down seven. So they're going to go to the locker room with a halftime lead. When I had a well, this is obviously the main attraction between these two teams for 101 times that they've done it. A Red River rivalry, State Fair at Texas, halftime. It's Oklahoma, 10 unanswered points to lead 10-7 over the seventh-ranked Longhorns. There's nothing corny about this game, folks, <laughs> if you've never been here. Boys, it's been a good one so far. Hard-hitting, <laughs> nice move. Hard-hitting first half. What do you think Texas has to do in the second half there, well, Mr. Mustard? First Mustard? of all, i got to learn how to eat these yeah. babies. I keep getting them in my nose, but I think Texas, they're going to have to run the ball. They have to run the football. I'm, I'm telling you right now, they're not going to win this game if they just decide to throw it. I can't listen to him. <laughs> He's got mustard on his nose. I, I can't get it. I can't get this right. Colt McCoy is going to have to get in gear here in the second half a little bit. I think he is, uh, and I think he will. He just has to come back and start throwing the ball. And uh, but he hasn't made any big mistakes. No crucial mistakes for a young kid. Reggie Smith and Adrian Peterson are back deep as Texas will kick, and Oklahoma will have the ball first to start the third quarter. Remember, Peterson took one 59 yards on a kickoff earlier. And this is high and in his direction at the 11. And this time they're waiting for him at about the 19-yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, you talk about Texas running the ball. You know why? Because Adrian Peterson almost doubled Texas' entire output. He had 71 yards rushing. The Horns only had 38. Why did that happen? Well, Bob Stoop said finally he's got his defense playing fundamental football, tackling the way they really haven't been able to do this year. He said he wants to see more of that to stop the Texas run that you guys talk about them being effective at. And you have to think about Adrian Peterson, how effective he is in all the second halves that he's played in in his three-year career. Here he comes on first down, puts his head down, spins out to about the 23-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Statistically, in the first half, and there's the way it looks. Oklahoma, 64 rushing yards. Peterson actually had more than that, but of course the sacks are filtered in. Not, so, a, not a lot of numbers there, Brad. Nope. Hard-hitting defense by both teams today. At three plays and out for Texas. That's not good. Second down, a long five here. Here's the stretch play to Peterson. And Texas defensively doing a good job to open this third quarter. Rashad Babano is the guy that makes the stop. But this guy, Adrian Peterson, his coach will admit it too. In the second half, he is the man. I would think his endurance and and, and his, he, he's so physical and, and has such great endurance that he stays strong even in the fourth quarter, if not gets stronger, uh, and his competitiveness. He's flanked to Paul Thompson's right in the shotgun. Four wideouts for Thompson on third down and seven. Quick throw out. It's going to be incomplete, and Oklahoma's got to give it up. Texas does its job on its opening series defensively. Well, our out of whack statistic average penalties per game six for today and on the season five and a half. Time for a punt. Michael Cohen to kick. And that's Aaron Ross. Waiting back inside the 40-yard line. Texas shifting on that defensive front. They're a good punt-blocking team. They might start trying to bring it here. And now Delay Oklahoma stands up. And a penalty. Number 31 on the kicking team. Penalty's five yards, and it's still fourth down. The guy you want to watch out for is number 27, Michael Griffin. He's blocked seven punts in his career for Texas. And that's a Big 12 record. And there he is, lining up on the left wing. The protection guys for Oklahoma, and they all stand up again. 
And trying to get the clock started is Cooper Castleberry. Now Cohen's inside his own five. They should get good field position out of this, regardless of how far the kick is. They're having trouble with the clock right now, I think. Now well, we'll try it again. Cohen took a long time. They got close to it. Ross will clear everybody out of the way, but it's going to bounce out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And that's great field position for Texas. Their last six drives, they haven't done much with them, though, have they? Only the second drive did they get the touchdown. The other, the other five drives, look at this, all three and out. That's what Mac was talking about to Bonnie when he went in to halftime. We, they stole the momentum. We had it in the first quarter, he said. Oklahoma took it the second quarter. Now he stopped them. They got the ball opening. Oklahoma did. Now they've got great position to go down and recapture the momentum and get some points on the board. Remember, Salvin Young has done most of their damage offensively. He's with Colt McCoy in the Longhorn backfield. They fake it to him. McCoy, deep out. Dangerous pass, but it's caught by Pittman. And Pittman's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Boy, I thought Oklahoma was going to make a play on that, but Pittman did a nice job coming back to his quarterback, and it's a 17-yard pickup. Nick Harris thought he had an interception, number five, for Oklahoma. He is a nickel back. He'll be outside here Look on the, on the right-hand side of your screen. He really thinks he's going to get the ball. Look at this. He thought he had the ball. Pittman just goes up and takes it away at the high point. It's a good play by Pittman to stop and not keep running, but come back to the ball and get it before the Nick Harris got it. First Texas first down since halfway through the first quarter. Now it's Selvin Young trying to cut back down to about the 33-yard line. Picked up a couple. C.J. IU, the defensive end, made the stop. Selvin Young has the Texas touchdown today, a 15-yarder capping that one touchdown drive. Otherwise, it's been dry spells for the Longhorn offense all day long. Before that last completion, McCoy had completed six, only six passes to six different receivers. Second down and eights. Three wideouts for Colt, including Lima Swede down to the bottom of the screen. Oklahoma looking like they're going to bring everybody. Here they come. Blitz, the fade to Swede. He got separation. Touchdown, Texas. Bebo didn't look that excited, but the Texas fans are. 33-yard touchdown. Man coverage on the outside. DJ Wolf, who's been beaten before this season. Sweet kind of shoves him a little bit. That's, that's, you're not going to call that. Pushes off, gets the touchdown. So Texas, as Mac Brown said to Bonnie, going to the locker room, the momentum will swing back and forth in the second half. It's already swung burnt orange direction. Greg Johnson, point after, is up and good. 12 minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 52-yard three-play drive. Didn't take long. One minute exactly. And the big hookup, Colt McCoy to Lima Swede. 6-4 target, his favorite one. Sixth touchdown of the year for Swede. And the Horns are in front of the Sooners. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Colt McCoy to Lima Swede, 33 yards and a touchdown, and Texas back in front. Greg Johnson will tee it up, 31 yards per touchdown catch. He's starting to live up to that number four that Roy Williams used to wear. <laughs> That's true. He was the big play receiver coming in for Texas, and he has uh, certainly proved to be in here in the second half. Adrian Peterson on the kick way over by the sideline at the four. Looking for a block. And Texas has got him all wrapped up. He's not going anywhere this time. Let's take you back to the touchdown that put the Longhorns in front, Bob. Colt McCoy, the quarterback, the blitz is on from both sides, and he stays cool. The receiver, man on man, straight down the sideline. He knows how much time he's got. He fakes, 
goes through with the fake. Perfect throw to Swede, who gets in for the score. And for Swede, I mentioned his sixth touchdown catch of the year. Longhorns are rocking now. Everybody in burnt orange making noise on that end of the Cotton Bowl because Adrian Peterson's got to set up at his own two-yard line. They're trying to make it difficult for the Sooners. Finley, the tight end in motion. And it's Peterson putting his head down and going down at about the line of scrimmage. Not much there. Derek Loki, the defensive tackle, made the stop. And now Texas is fired up. They came out of the locker room. They did their job on their first defensive series, and now they're fired up again. Well, Mac Brown told us going in what they needed to do, and they did it. They, they stopped Oklahoma, got the ball in good position, got a score. Now the defense needs to continue. Oklahoma's going to have a tough time hearing down in this end zone with all the Texas fans down at that end. Second down and 10. Thompson play action in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, the fullback out of the backfield, and it's going to bring up third down and long. Aaron Ross out of the secondary, been talking about the guys up front that makes his job easier. I would have to say our defensive line, um, they do a tremendous job on run defense and and giving us the opportunity as the secondary to make plays when they put pressure on the quarterback. And now you know that Crowder and Robinson and those guys are going to pin their ears back on Thompson. It's third and ten. Killebrew thinking about a blitz. Thompson fires out complete to Johnson. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 22, but I think it's enough for the first down. On third and 10, he got 11. Manuel Johnson, second big catch of the day for him. Manuel Johnson knew exactly where he was, and he knew where he had to get. And that was to get the first down. It wouldn't have been a thing if you catch the ball on third down and you don't get your first down in their territory. That was just a great play by the receiver, and the pass was on target. There you go, Bobby Stoops. <laughs> that ball, the defensive back wasn't far from it either. He probably had his... He had his heart up in his throat. First and 10 out to 22. A little bit of breathing room for the Sooners. Play fake, the bootleg, and the throw. Gresham just about had it. Had he caught it, he'd have been gone. The freshman tight end who had a big play a little bit earlier and almost came up with a big first down. We're welcoming special guest into the booth here in the third quarter. One of my idols from back in the day and still one of the greatest broadcasters of all time, Pat Summerall. Thank Pat, good you. to see you. Thank you, Brad. You've good done a lot, you. of, a lot of big games in yep. this place. Uh, both pro and uh, college. I did, uh, I think I last did a Cotton Bowl 40 years ago wow. in this place. And you're gonna do another and one coming up? One. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I came today. I want to see what it was like. Come on up, let's step into the action here. Second down and 10. At the 22, flags all over the field. Pat, do you have one? You've done so many great games. And one memory of this place that stands out among the others? Oh, I think maybe a championship game, I think, in 1960, before the first Super Bowl. The Packers and the Cowboys, that, uh, it looked like the Cowboys had a chance to win right at the end. Tom Brown was a defensive back right. for, for Green Bay and intercepted a pass in the end zone, a Don Meredith pass. So I, I, I think that's... The game that sticks out in my mind more than any other. Guys, you know, when you're a kid like me and you have an idol, it's uh, usually you don't get a chance to meet Ray Scott and Pat Summerall in your lifetime and spend time with them. Those were my two guys. And Ray taught you how to do play by doing. Yes, he did. He really did. Well, I got a chance to work four games with your idol. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah, you were my idol, too. <laughs> Second and 15. Peterson. Well, he got out. Uh, across the original line of scrimmage to about the 24-yard line. What are your impressions of this game so far? Good one. Just what I expected. I knew both teams were closely matched, and I figured, you know, whoever gets the breaks, whoever gets the long one. And so far, it's been Texas. What a scene and what a setting yeah, this is. is. And you're home. This is a home game for you, right? Well, I live on the other side of Dallas over by the airport. So, yeah, it's close for me. On the other side of the airport in Dallas with the traffic, it takes you about two days. <laughs> That's especially with a fare going up. Again, correct. <laughs> and we've got a timeout taken by Texas. We'll see if Oklahoma can keep their drive alive. They're trailing by four. A little over 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Hang around. We'll be right back. You're watching ESPN on ABC. 
The Midway at the State Fair of Texas, edition 2006. Oklahoma with a big third down here. Third and eight. They trail by four with 10 08 remaining in the third quarter. Thompson. Deep ball. High and caught oh. by Malcolm Kelly. Oh. oh, wow, what a catch. His first catch of the day, and Michael Griffin let him have it right in the number four, but he held on. Well, he beats Terrell Brown, number five, on, on the catch. But, you, you know, we've been waiting for this guy since the game we saw them play at Oklahoma. Catch the football. Malcolm Kelly has got such great range. When he goes up in the air, you talk about perfect timing. Terrell Brown has no chance, number five. Look where this ball is thrown up, away, and there's no chance to even stop it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, take a shot. And Thompson can't get away. Texas with a seven-yard sack. Let's take a look at the quarterbacks and how they've done. Bob? McCoy is 8 of 13 with a touchdown. The key is no interceptions on either side of the ball. Thompson has had some chances in, in the first half to make some huge plays and just overthrew them a little bit. So big loss will bring up second down and 17. Quentin Chaney comes in. Malcolm Kelly out. Still a four wide out grouping with Finley the tight end in the slot. Nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Thompson flares it out. Nice catch by Peterson. Not an easy catch and now he's across midfield to about the 49 yard line. Pat, uh, your impressions of Adrian Peterson. You've seen a lot of good ones in the day. Reminds me uh, quite a bit of a couple of guys who played here at SMU. Eric, Eric Dickerson. Dickerson. Eric Dickerson would yeah. be one. Yeah. Craig James also. Well, Pony's back in the studio. He's loving you saying that. Really? Craig's, yeah. He's back there. Well, he's a good work. man. He's a good man. They were uh, the Pony Express, and thus Craig's nickname. Third down, a manageable seven now. Kelly's back in there. Iglesias is the motion man. Thompson trying to keep the drive alive. Johnson, Manuel Johnson, hit as he tried to make the catch, and he's popped pretty good, and now they're talking to each other. That's Terrell Brown over there, incomplete. See, that's where that's where Paul Thompson is a little bit inconsistent. He, he, this ball needs to be thrown lower so the guy doesn't have to jump. If you stick him with it, he's got a chance to make a move and get some yards for a first down. But the little things, Paul Thompson just needs to be a little bit more consistent. And Aaron Ross is back deep. Ross has not been able to get his hands on one today. This is a knuckleball that he's got to wave off with a fair catch in its Texas at the 21 yard line. Pat Summerall, Hall of Fame broadcaster and a good friend. Partner, good to see you. Good Thank luck you. in the Cotton Bowl. And I know Thank you got you. some other games coming up later in the year. I'll be working. You'll be working. We'll be watching. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll be listening. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Longhorns a 21-10 lead over Oklahoma. When you see how successful he's become, it's hard to imagine how much Sweet struggled when he first got to Texas. He played in a wing tee in high school, so he said he was more of a blocking tight end. But this was the big thing that turned it around. The winning touchdown against fourth ranked Ohio State on the road last year. He's like, that's when I first started to feel like I clicked in this offense and that I was a true part of the team. Well, he was sort of intimidated by his idol Roy Williams, who wore that number four. Same face mask, same jersey number. He was just a youngster. Now he's turning into the kind of receiver they thought he would be. Colt McCoy is going to take off with it. First down across the 30 and chased out of bounds at the 33 yard line. 12 yard scramble for number 12. Well, I'll tell you that thing, that, was that opening up? When, <laughs> they ran a four man rush uh, against Colt and he uh, just saw it so quick. Watch how quick his feet are. As soon as he sees the hole in the middle, he knows they're covered. Look at, there's nobody around him. All he has to do now is get, he's got the first down, get out of bounds. That's one a year ago that Vince Young might have taken to the house. Exactly. First and ten, though. Inside handoff. And only a yard or so for Jamal Charles. CJIU is the guy that made the stop. Time permitting, reminder to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights with John and Craig and Doug in New York. 725 remaining 
in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, Texas went out in front, seven to nothing. Oklahoma, ten unanswered points, including an Adrian Peterson touchdown run, and then Colt McCoy hooked up with Lima Swede in this third quarter, and that's where we are. Texas with a 14 to 10 lead in a hard hitting matchup number 101 between these two border rivals. Colt McCoy across the middle, used the umpire as a screen almost, and he's got the first down toss to Jordan Shipley. Well, they're just getting absolutely no pressure at all on Colt McCoy. He, they've got to put, send a couple of linebackers, at least one. I thought that they would come with at least five on almost every play, but they're not. McCoy has hit seven different receivers. Grease doing a good job of mixing it up. You know, you don't come to the line of scrimmage saying, I'm going to throw it to this guy or that guy. The defense will dictate where you throw the ball. Just wait and let them tell you where to throw it. He'll roll out of the shadows of the Cotton Bowl, put the brakes on, and now he's going to get what he can. Held onto the ball. Boy, he almost fumbled, and he picked up four or five. Nick Harris made the stop. This young fella is growing up in a hurry. And, you know, Mac Brown points at a time when Major Applewhite had a big game in this game, and it was the beginning of becoming the leader. And shaking up uh, sooner, Larry Burdine he appears to be all right. But this is a defining moment when your quarterback's only made five starts, and all of a sudden you're here, and there's a packed house, and you got nothing but crimson and cream one way, and the burnt orange you're looking into. It's a big game. He doesn't. He doesn't remind me as a, of a young quarterback. He's he is playing really well. Charles. And Charles broke free. Jamal Charles down to the 36-yard line. First down, Texas. So they change it up. Jamal Charles more of the speed back than Selvin Young is. We got some All-American in those uh, offensive line. Ahead of Charles, you got Blaylock and Senline and Stuttered. There's a look at Justin Blaylock, preseason All-American. Senior out of Plano, Texas. Number 63 right here, watch him pull. Out ahead, he was a, he's a tackle that kicked down the guard today because of the injury to Dockery. Free play here, it appears, for Texas. McCoy incomplete, and it looked like Oklahoma jumped offside. There might even be two flags on the play. Well, that's the only thing that shook up McCoy. He had a free play. He couldn't complete the <laughs> He didn't the know whether to run no. or throw it. When the pressure's on, he's fine. Number 98 of the defense. The penalty is five yards, and it's still first down. John Williams just fell out of his three-point stance into the neutral zone. So it's still first down, and now it's first and five at the 30. So Texas with the lead. And the football in Oklahoma territory. And this has been a different Texas Longhorn team in this third quarter that has five and a half minutes remaining. Nine penalties on Oklahoma today. That's a season high. And we still got a long ways to go. Selvin Young almost broke it again. Boy, he finds a little crease and he knows what's to do, uh, what to do with it. He got about four more yards, third down and a yard after we check in. And get an update with John. John? Whoa. Hello. Well, they got everybody leaning with Tebow running all the time, and he kind of faked it and then backed up and zipped it for a touchdown. Look at this pile moving on second and one. Colt McCoy. Just straight ahead, and you talk about plowing your way. Look at him. You know, you know what this offensive line is doing? Just watch these guys getting off at the same count. Now watch them move. There's a double team right across the middle. And they just keep with their blocks. I was watching when the running backs are running to the right or left. All they're doing is just staying with the guys in the white shirts that are in front of them. And the guys, the big linemen, and the five guys up front, what they're doing is they're holding their blocks a lot longer than Oklahoma has been. Colt McCoy, 23 yards rushing now. They come the other way with a counter and a hurdle job. And all the way to the five is Selvin Young. 15 more yards for Young. And now it's first and goal, Texas. And that's exactly what I was talking about. When these guys pull out, take a look at these linemen. Now, when they go out, they go out in tandem. Here they come. Now, they don't look around and back for where the back is. They look straight ahead and pick up a red shirt. And once they do, 
they're inside the 10 yard line. How about the athletic ability of Selvin Young just jumping over a guy that gets in the way? Casey stuttered. Had he not hurdled him, he wouldn't have gotten anywhere near the five. First and goal, Texas. With a four point lead, they don't want to waste an opportunity here, and Colt McCoy is going to call timeout. Timeout. Texas, Texas down to one timeout, and that might be something that could come back and haunt them later in the ballgame because we've got a lot of football left. Three minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And we'll see if Texas can capitalize after I remind you to join us on ABC tomorrow. Some of the PGA Tour's best will tee it up for the final round of the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro. Coverage starts tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC Sports. Well, guys, this would be a huge score for Texas if they were able to put it in the end zone and take a 21 to 10 lead. Here at the State Fair where everybody has fun and everybody eats bad food or bad food for you. <laughs> Zach Latimer, we talked to him about what he might have for a morsel or two here at the State Fair. Whatever meat they got, I eat it. I don't do no. I heard PT say funnel cakes. Uh, that's a waste of my time. I need a little meat or something. <laughs> Turkey leg, uh, if they got it. Zach, like it. Zach is not a funnel cake kind of guy. That's a waste of my time. That's a waste of time. <laughs> There's what the coupons are. 50 cents a coupon. You can get fried everything. They had fried olives, fried pickles, the fried ice cream, the corny dogs, and fried chips. You can fry anything. They fried, they fried Coke balls out there. Oh, and I, no. I asked him if they had diet Coke balls because I was trying to watch my waistline. Yeah. They got everything out there. Cool. <laughs> First and goal at the five. Jamal Charles has checked in. Colt McCoy is still making comments out there to Lima Swede, who's at the top of your screen. Charles trying to sweep the left side, and he's going to go down. Actually lost about a yard. Steve Coleman made the stop defensively. It'll be second down and goal. Well, do you try a fade here? Do you run a quarterback draw here? Uh, Greg Davis is the offensive coordinator, and he has done a great job working with first with, with uh, Vince Young for the last couple of years and saying, hey, Vince, we're going to do what you do best and do it your way. Now he's got the young kid, Colt McCoy, and he's going to do it with his, what he does best. Certainly a fade at the top up here is in order. Second down, shovel pass inside. It doesn't go anywhere. They've tried it a couple of times today, and it's going to be third and goal. Calvin Thibodeau smelled that one out. Well, that's what you get when you have when you're bunched up around the goal line, and you have guys that have an area to, to take care of. Thibodeau that time, his job was in the middle of the field. The shovel pass was there. He makes the play. Just don't do something you're not supposed to do, and, and don't get yourself out of position down here. There's not that much room anyway. They've only passed it once on this drive. They're sweet up here. Third and goal. They're looking that way. In the corner. Touchdown, Texas. Jordan Shipley. Everybody was thinking about Swede. They snuck him to the inside. That left the outside open for Jordan Shipley, the sophomore out of Burnett, Texas. And it was a perfect throw. Shipley will also hold for Greg Johnson's point after. And it's up and good. 21 to 10 Longhorns. 79 yards in 11 plays. A little over five minutes. Up here, the wide receiver is going to come in. That is, uh, that is a sweep. Here's Shipley's going to go out and then up. Swede's going to clear the area out. He just runs to the corner. What a great throw. This kid is a guy that's had some injuries in his career. He's got six career catches, three of which have gone for touchdowns. And that ball was in the air before he made that break, and it was right on the money. Looking back into the sun, too. Nice, uh, nice play. I'll tell you what, old Colt McCoy, he knew he was going to take a shot from CJIU 
and he had he had to wait till the last second to let this ball go. And IU just nails him. I don't Watch think, this. I don't think he ever saw the touchdown. No, he didn't. Watch this. Here's IU there. He stayed there a long time and held up to get that ball off. What a great job by McCoy. We're watching a quarterback grow up, boys, right in front of our eyes. I'm impressed. This kid is not playing like a freshman. Making his uh, sixth start of the year. Five out of five this half, including that touchdown. Peterson trying to set up the wall to the left. Now he'll try to do whatever he can on his own. He got the right corner, and he got it out. Nice gain out to the 37 or the 38-yard line. At the conclusion of our game today, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Adrian Peterson, we talked about the fact he gets better in the second half. They're going to need him in the second half. Now Oklahoma trails by 11. They had a 10-7 halftime lead. Texas has taken the lead here in the third with two and a half to play. And Oklahoma now sets up at its own 38-yard line. Peterson only 10 yards this half. And he's got more than that now. About four or five more. But they do hold on for dear life. Terrell Brown hanging on to his ankles. And Peterson at 86 yards on the day. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And key play in the ball game. Colt McCoy to Lima Sweet. 33 yards right on the money. That gave him the lead, and they haven't looked back. So McCoy with two touchdown passes. First to that guy, and then to Shipley. Oklahoma playing from 11 down. Here's the toss. Peterson trying to stiff arm. Whoa, that didn't work, did it? Aaron Lewis stayed with it. Impressed by the tackling of Texas Longhorns. The play before, Terrell Brown out on the corner on a one-on-one -on -one tackle, and that time by Lewis. Seventh time today that Peterson's been stopped for a loss or no gain. And now it's going to bring up a third down and eight. Second half numbers have not been so far what everybody expected, including all of us. But we got a lot of football left. Thompson slant. Johnson's got it. First down at the 45-yard line. He has used Manuel Johnson very, very efficiently today. He has. And there is a perfect throw. An absolute perfect throw because this ball was thrown into coverage. And again, Texas are only coming with four guys. They're doing the job up front, which they knew they had to do. Manuel Johnson, all three of his catches have come on third down and picked up first downs. At the 45-yard line. Now it's Peterson's turn. Adrian goes... Close to the 40, a pickup of about five. Let's get another update. Here's John Saunders. John. How good is he? Maybe not as good as Adrian Peterson, but he's growing into that. Peterson tripped up, didn't get a first down, got to the 37-yard line, and the quarter comes to a close. Mack Brown's team in command, courtesy Alima Swede and Colt McCoy, end of three, Longhorns 21, Sooners 10. Big third down coming up, and Chris Messner, the big left tackle for Oklahoma. Bob Stoops is at two down territory. Remember, Hartley, their kicker, hit one from 52 yards a year ago in this series. They obviously are thinking first down and touchdown because they're down 11 points to start the third quarter. I don't even care. I give the ball to Adrian Peterson twice. And if he can't get three yards twice, carrying the ball twice, something's wrong. Here's the first time. He's, he's got it. He's gone. 
quite gone, but all the way down to the 26-yard line. Oklahoma has had success with those three tight ends and running at them or play action and throwing downfield. And to they've them. used that uh, setup pretty much the whole ball game. Now they have one big catch to Malcolm Kelly. He hasn't been used that much. And now you see Joe John Finley a little bit shaken up as well. Now he lost his shoe. He just threw a shoe. Just threw a shoe. Go that, down with that big old cow down there and get another shoe. Adrian Peterson comes out. He's over the 100-yard rushing mark with one touchdown so far today. First down at the 26-yard line here. He's got 21 carries. He needs to get over 30, I guess, to have an average game. They expect him to touch it 35 times a game, either as a receiver or as a running back. And he carries it there, and no gain on the play. i got to give... The Longhorn defense credit. We said that coming in, he's going to get his yards. That was one of Paul's magic things. He's going to get his yards, so don't make anybody else beat you. So far, he's got 100, but nobody else has beaten him. <laughs> well, that's the thing you have to do with this guy. And, and just to admit, say, hey, you know what? Even Mac Brown said it. This guy is so good, he gets that 100 or 150 even. That's okay, but don't let anybody else fool around. <laughs> Paul Thompson still got to make a play here, too, Bob. Uh, he does. I'm impressed with the way uh, Texas came out in the second half with the momentum and grabbed it right back. Two possessions, two scores. Here's Thompson in the shotgun and flags down. Let's see who moved. Whether it was a false start or if Oklahoma jumped offside, there was movement on both sides. As the officials try to sort it out. It's either going to be second down in about uh, 16 or it'll be second down in six. Part of the snap, a false start by number 83 of the offense. Penalty is five yards. Don't forget, coming up Saturday Night Football, two great matchups for you. Most of you will see the Pac-10 showdown between Oregon and Cal. Others will see Nebraska and Iowa State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Tonight, that's the fifth false start penalty on Bob Stoops' Oklahoma team. And the tenth penalty for 67 yards. Texas, on the other hand, has been only penalized twice for 20 yards. Season high in penalties for Oklahoma. Second down and 16. Thompson, little option here. He's going to keep it. Ooh, oh. Man, as he met head on in the hole at the 29-yard line by Robert Killebrew. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see him coming uh -uh. either. <laughs> <laughs> he figured, well, I got me an opening here, and I'm going to run for a little while. Well, he and did Killebrew, have an opening. He yeah. had an opening for a minute. Boy, I'll tell you, it did Killebrew hammer him? How would you like to be that field judge today? He is going to have a headache. That's that is not a nice job to have. The line judge or the field judge, either either linesman that are is next to the head coaches on either team. Third down and 13. Thompson running for his life, throwing on the run, and it's caught for a first down. Ball is out. Killebrew's got it for Texas. Going the other way. There are no whistles. Kellerbrew still on his feet, all the way out to the 40-yard line. He made the hit a play ago, and now he just made the play of the game, maybe, on the fumble recovery. Thompson makes a good throw. Got the first down, he's got his feet down, he's got possession. Brown, number five, knocks it loose, and Killebrew picks it up. There is no question, but that is a fumble. There's Iglesias, there's possession, there's the hit right on the ball, right on the money. And Killebrew goes the other way, out to the 40-yard line to match his jersey number. There is some hitting yes, there going is. on it's today. This, this has always been a physical game. You know who hits him at the end of this play when Killebrew is running with the ball all the way at the other end? Adrian Peterson. <laughs> He's the guy that laid at the end of this. I mean, he just hammers him. Here it comes. Here's the play. Here comes Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Bam. Oh, that's where that <laughs> lid came off. <laughs> Malcolm Kelly and Peterson knocking the helmet off Killebrew, but Killebrew will take that any old day. Officials are reviewing the last play. Whether or not Iglesias had possession to us, we don't think there's any doubt, but we'll let them make the decision. 
He'd already had the ball, cupped it, came down, both feet on the ground before the hit took place. And Mac Brown is hoping that uh, what was seen on the field stays the way it was on the field. Both hands down, both feet down, the hit perfectly right on the football by Terrell Brown. They're the only, I think the only thing that they're really reviewing, Brad, is that he had possession when he got hit. Did he have the ball long enough? Because it had to be a fumble if he did. So we're waiting to remind you the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro tomorrow. Three o'clock Eastern time. PGA Tour, some of the finest golfers in the world will compete tomorrow on ABC Sports. Bob Stoops has not had too many things go his way today. Two turnovers, both in Texas territory, when it looked like they could get right back in the ball game. Well thrown ball from Thompson to Iglesias, who's a sure handed receiver, mm -hmm. but the perfect hit yeah. on the football. What a great job he has done since he has come to Oklahoma. I guess. The program was down for so many years. It was, it was uh, so good and so high and so prestigious for so many years then it was down and then as soon as Bob Stoops came the second year they won a national championship in 2000 Big 12 today and m beat Kansas Oklahoma State leading Kansas State as is Baylor over Colorado the other two games one we mentioned on ABC tonight and then Missouri and Texas is a little bit later the play stands is called I'm a little surprised that even took that long and Mac Brown says first down and he's right at the 40 yard line you know, you, have, you put a collection of the hits of this ball game, Brad. <laughs> Could have a highlight reel, couldn't you? Oh, man. Well, would you expect anything less? No, nope. I would not, Bob. Now, this, I, this was my first shot with you guys. You've been doing this for a while. I, I'll tell you what, it is exciting. And not one person has emptied a seat in this place with 12.28 to go at the State Fair of Texas in the Cotton Bowl. It's a 101st matchup in the Red River rivalry and right now the Red River what's from the Red River to the south is doing better than what is from the Red River to the north McCoy play fake pump fake wants to go long incomplete intended for Lima Swede good coverage out there defensively by Darian Williams let's check in and get an update with Matt Weiner Matt Washington's only loss was to Oklahoma the game right. we saw right. on the ground is Selvin Young and Young is wrapped up at the 40 nice tackle by Zach Latimer let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein as you watch the freshman Colt McCoy play with so much poise Brad you can't you can't help but wonder if it has to do with the fact that he is the son of a high school coach Brad McCoy coached him in high school talking about the importance of not getting too down when things aren't going well not getting too high when they do also taught him about the importance of film work which sometimes takes kids a while and uh, Cole was telling me coordinator Greg Davis gave him a great tip he said when I watch film I imagine myself in the formation and then see how the defense plays it out. He's played it out pretty well today, but he's got a third and nine here. Oklahoma's going to bring some pressure. Colts going to throw. Dangerous pass broken up nicely by Reggie Smith. So Texas will have to give it back to the Sooners. The thing I'm impressed with with Colt McCoy is he doesn't get he doesn't make bad really bad throws doesn't get doesn't make the mistakes get balls picked off. I mean, there was a, an impromptu thing right. that he that he tried to make a play, but it didn't work. But he didn't. Nothing bad happened. Bonnie talked with his dad, Brad, earlier, who was his coach in high school. Now he's the head coach at Graham North in Abilene. Greg Johnson to punt. Not a good kick unless it takes a great bounce, and it actually does. Inside the twenty. All the way down to about the 17 yard line. Well, time is of the essence right now for the Oklahoma Sooners with 11 minutes and five seconds remaining in the ball game. They trail by 11. They do have one weapon in their arsenal they can always count on when the going gets tough and gets late. Can Adrian Peterson save the day this afternoon? 
You're watching ESPN on ABC. This is ESPN on ABC brought to you by Best Buy. It's the Red River rivalry. The Sooner Schooner would love to cut loose down there out of the tunnel. Their team down 11 right now, 21 to 10. Texas in front with 11 minutes and five seconds remaining in the ball game. Oklahoma's got the ball, and they're going to work from their own 17-yard line. Adrian Peterson over 100 yards on the ground, but they need him more now than ever. They fake it to him. Thompson's going to go deep for Malcolm Kelly. Incomplete. Good coverage by Brown defensively in the secondary for Texas. Wednesday at 9, 8 Central, an all-new Lost right before the 9. For the survivors of Oceanic Flight 815, the real adventure is just beginning. It's a hit series that's become a national phenomenon. USA Today says the best is back. Lost only on ABC Wednesday night. Yeah, I saw. I watched that two-hour preview uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, caught me, got me caught up on everything. That's good. That was uh, that was good. You know, in one night you could watch two uh, two years of the shows. Whichever one of these coaches talks about a lost when this one's over will be out of the national championship picture. Trying to swing it out to Adrian Peterson. Better be careful. That might be a lateral. If it is, it's a Texas touchdown. The referee says yes. The pass was behind the line of scrimmage and behind Adrian Peterson, and Ross knew it was a live ball. Touchdown, Texas. Let's take a look to see if the ball is, goes backwards. Let it go. Go ahead. Oh, that's close. Whoa, 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 that whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell you close. what. I uh, mean, he touches that thing with his right hand, which is in front of him. And I'll tell you right, I'll bring this back. Yeah, that that is that is it is way, way that you know, that ball, if he'd have touched it with his left hand turning his body. This is the best, this is the best angle right here. Take a look at Adrian Peterson's right hand, folks. Now here's the ball. Now he's even his, go. his go ahead. arms are even with the quarterback. Go ahead. Now he's even with the quarterback. Look at now he hits the ball. It's in front. I'm sorry. That's 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 a forward pass. It it is not backwards. At worst, it is it is a it is straight to the side. But it's. I mean, if they hadn't have called that, we would have we would have been saying, well, that's very close, but it's not backward. But that's not our job got a guy sitting over here paying him to do this that's right that's John Davidson the head replay official Cooper Castleberry obviously the head referee 10 37 boy you talk about the replay of the ball game right here maybe the replay of the season for both these coaches <laughs> can you hear Stoops going oh no not, not again, again. <laughs> time permitting stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report John and Craig and Doug will have all the scores and highlights for you and here's a call. The pass was thrown from the 12 yard line and it landed at the 12 yard line. By rule, that's a backwards pass and the play stands. Touchdown, Texas. Oh boy. See, the, the officials know these rules a lot better than we know these rules. I always thought it had to be a backwards pass. And I must be, the rule must say it must be a forward pass because if it's lateral straight across, they can pick it up. Texas in command with Johnson's extra point up and good. And now time is running out on the Sooners. Patience is run out with Bob Stoops, that's for sure. Boggs, one of the delicatessen, uh, delicacies of the State Fair of Texas. Bob Stoops still talking with the field judge about the last play that netted Texas another touchdown and now they lead 28 to 10 time running out on the Sooners and I tell you Bob will be going to the coaches meetings saying I, I don't know about replay <laughs> Reggie Smith from the 10 out to about the 24 let's check in with Bonnie. 
Well, watching Texas defense play a far cry from the way they played against Ohio State in week two. Aaron Ross told me after that game, the entire defense got together. He said everything that could have gone wrong that week did. Blown assignments, missed coverages. He said we came together and made a vow. We will never, ever play that poorly again as a defense. And based on what we're seeing here today, Brown, they are keeping up to that. Yes, they are. He had the touchdown moments ago. And now Paul Thompson, the pressure's all on him. Last year he was playing wide receiver, caught one ball for six yards. Now he's the quarterback and he's down 18 points with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left in the ballgame. Adrian Peterson slips, now reverses his field. AD is going to get dragged down at about the 28-yard line. Pickup of about five. Matt Weiner's got an update in New York. Matt. Iglesias, Joaquin Iglesias, whose fumble in this half kind of turned things around. It looked like Oklahoma maybe had something going, get down there, possibly make it 21 to 17. Instead, Killebrew picked up that loose ball, took it down, and then moments ago, the lateral straight across the line of scrimmage at the 12-yard line that ended up being a Texas touchdown on a live ball. Peterson has not broken a big run today with the exception of his touchdown. And he's met in the hole and stuffed for a loss. Loki, the first guy there. And now he gets shoved by one of the offensive linemen. He's getting a little chippy right now. Well, you want to talk about hitting the wall? You know, Adrian Peterson, you don't get that many good shots at him. They ran him up right off tackle, and there was nothing there. They're thinking about fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down and a yard. A big, big yard. The toss to Adrian Peterson. And he got the first down, but it was second effort that got it. Out across the 35 to the 36. You know, Brad, every every time that in this game, now I don't know, you, it, you've got about eight and a half minutes to go, and, and they're, you're behind by 18 points, but every time they faked the ball to Adrian Peterson, and he went up in the middle, Everybody released him. Nobody covered him. Nobody went to him. It'd be tough to fake to him now. He's not in the game. Well, and Patrick has come in to give AD a breather. There's Josh Heupel with the headphones on. The quarterback coach is the guy that led Oklahoma to its national championship in 2000. First down for Paul Thompson. And the OU offense. Thompson in trouble, flushed out of the pocket, and he'll be brought down at the 39-yard line, a pickup of about three. Brian Arakpo made the stop. Somebody's going to have to make a big play pretty soon for Oklahoma, or they're going to be three and two. Well, they're going up against a very good defense. They returned seven starters from that national championship team of last year. Oh, Michael Griffin has just played a whale of a game, and he just let... Joe John Finley have it. Joe John is going to be in that old big tub tomorrow afternoon <laughs> with the cold water and then the hot water because they've been nailing him. Oklahoma without a huddle trying to hurry things a little bit to change the pace here. The time is running out. They're down to seven and a half minutes on third down. Thompson throws, completes it out to Manuel. Oh, Johnson. Oh. Whoa. And that was Aaron Ross. That was one of the best shots of the day as well. Ray Lewis, a guy that can put a shot on you. He and Steve McNair and the Ravens off to a great start. They play Monday Night Football against Jake Plummer and the Broncos. And the Ravens punishing D stop Plummer and the Broncos. We'll find out Monday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD and in Spanish on ESPN Deportes. Hey, that would be a good one to watch. Yeah, that should be pretty uh, good. That, that's going to be a good one. Brett. Not that I'm pulling for everybody to get beat again this year. But <laughs> I'm pulling for the Broncos. You're starting already. I'm aren't pulling you? for the Broncos in that one. 49 yard line, first down, Oklahoma. Thompson, quick slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Aaron Ross. He's got another big play. That might seal things right there. 
This ball should have never been thrown. And he had time, and he just threw it into a crowd. And that crowd being Aaron Rock. I disagree with you. Johnson, the receiver, needed to go down and make a play on it like Ross did. Ross was the only one making a play on the ball. Johnson should have went down. He got no help at all. Watch this. He's going to go down and run a slant to the inside. Look at this. Number one, Johnson, he says, hey, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go down and play with you, but, but Ross went down and deserved it, got the interception. That might do it for Texas. Two big plays in the last five minutes by Aaron Ross. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Think you can't fry anything? How about fried Coke? You roll it up, you dip it down in some grease, and you put it in there, and then you put the Coke, Diet Coke, if you prefer, or caffeine-free, then a little whipped cream. You're ready to go. I'm going to go back to Atlanta and see if they'll make one of those for me at the varsity or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> but it's got to be diet and caffeine-free. Diet, diet caffeine-free yeah. yeah. Coke Because you're watching, Because you're watching all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, I am. Now, right now, Texas is watching their Longhorns with seven minutes Three. remaining in the ball game with an 18-point lead and the football. Two tight ends set now for Texas. They'll take all the time they can and just milk this thing. Motion on the defensive front. They whistle it dead. Jamal Charles breaks into the clear. Carl Pendleton looked like he came off sides. The updated IBM star watch, Lima Swede, has a touchdown catch today. So he's been a big part of Texas offense. And how about Michael Griffin? The intimidator. The intimidator, exactly. He's the loud one of the twins back there. Marcus is a quiet one because he's a couple minutes younger. And he's about five pounds lighter. Part of the snap, offsides by the defense. The penalty's five yards, and it's still first down. Brad, yes. with, with Michael, I don't think I'd put tackles. I would put hammers. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy came to play. Whoa. Well, they had one last year that was a good one back there, and Michael Huff, who won the Thorpe Award. And Michael Griffin might be on his way in that direction as well. Jamal Charles waits, waits for his blockers. And he almost got to the first down marker. <laughs> Good looking four yard run. Marcus Walker made the stop. And we're down to six and a half minutes. Let's get an update on Maryland and Georgia Tech. Here's Matt. All right, Matt, thanks. Maryland had the big lead on Georgia Tech coming off their big victory that we saw over Virginia Tech last week. Here's Colt McCoy straight ahead, and he's got the first down at midfield. Let's take a look at our best buy playbook. Number 12 is part of it, number 12. Yes, sir. Number Colt uh, McCoy, number 12 against the blitz. The defensive lineman slant a little bit to the left. Latimer going to blitz up the middle. He's going to stay cool under fire. Sees in play, knows he's got it protected. The ball's <laughs> going to go down the field. <laughs> and fakes it, sees it, <laughs> and that? throws it. He, you threw your ball a little early there, didn't you, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> You're a little early on I'm your just, ball there. I'm just impressed with this kid. You can't blitz him. He, he scrambles around, and he doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't throw the ball to the other team. Well, the thing about it is, too, as Mac Brown was talking about him, is that he, he has learned how, and he's a freshman now, to take control of the football and in control of this football team. There's his proud daddy again. Yeah, he said, I taught him everything I know. <laughs> he probably held a few things back. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to do that with college kids. Don't teach them everything you know, just most of it. Second down and 10. We're under five minutes. Texas appears on its way to be in five and one. This will move them probably into the top five because Auburn lost today if you missed that. Charles cuts back and he's got another first down. 11 yard pickup and that says it all right there for a Sooner fan. They've seen about all they want to see. Spread the load. I said that Texas take the pressure off of Colt McCoy. I think they've done that. 
And for Oklahoma, they had to have a balance attack. You had to have Peterson and the passing game, and the passing game wasn't there. Well, and for Texas, they did. They allowed Peterson to get most of his yards or close to what he had to get. They just didn't allow anyone else to beat him. Charles wraps his arms around the football, picked up about a yard, and will be under four minutes on the next snap as we check in with Bonnie. Such a dream day for Cole McCoy, Brad, because all he's ever wanted to do is go to Texas, which sort of makes him a Hatfield among the McCoys, because you see, his entire family went to college at Abilene Christian. His dad played football there, mom played basketball, grandfather coached football there, he had cousins and uncles who went there, but they really didn't give him too much of a hassle when he said he wanted to go to Texas. His parents just told him, we don't care where you go, as long as it's not A&M. <laughs> <laughs> that says a mouthful if you're a Longhorn fan right there. Second down and nine. And Salvin Young takes it inside the 35. Pacific Life game summary. If you're just joining us, hadn't seen some of the big plays. Salvin Young got things going with a 15-yard touchdown run, made it 7-0. The Longhorns are out in front. Oklahoma then Adrian Peterson answered from 29 yards out. They added a field goal. They led 10-7 at halftime. But it was all Texas in the second half. Colt McCoy getting popped, goes to Shipley on a perfect throw. That followed one from Colt McCoy to Lima Swede. Aaron Ross took in a lateral. A live ball for a touchdown. And it is 28-10 Texas. Salvin Young got a crease left side. Flags down, maybe a holding call. He's collared and run out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. And oh boy, <laughs> you know it's a football <laughs> game. It's just a football game. But maybe it's his first time here. <laughs> oh, no, he probably ate one of those deep fried <laughs> things. <laughs> and that's backing up on him. Uh, Talked to my old partner Keith Jackson last night. Yeah. He'd have some good words to say uh, about that kid. I crying. know he would. Holding, number 87 of the offense. The penalty is 10 yards and replay third down. So I, I asked him, I said, you've done a few of these ball games, these Texas, Oklahoma. He says, yeah, I said, I did a bunch of them, Grease. <laughs> I said, what was your favorite, Keith? He says, I, the mem most memorable one was 1976. I said, what made it memorable? He said, I had to catch a helicopter after the game. <laughs> I was doing the uh, World Series that night. I had to get to Kansas City. <laughs> but the Yankees and the Kansas City, oh. whatever they're called. <laughs> he was working with Cosell and Drysdale and Euchre. And he said, I had to get out of here and get over there to do a game. He said he hadn't did a baseball game in 11 years. <laughs> I said, that's what you remember most about this series? He says, well, that's that's what's come to my mind right now. Well, of course, Keith loved the travel so much anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Third down, 15. Charles on the inside, and we're down to 245 and running. Keith said he's not watching. He's not going to any of the ball games, any college kind of ball games. He said he's going to some. He said he's, uh, he said he, uh, he says the Washington State could have beat USC last week. He says they're not that good this year. Please. And Washington's got them close right now. All right. All right. Timeout with 2.42 remaining in the ballgame. Bevo looks like he's going to have a nice trip home. <laughs> Gold Hat Trophy goes to the winner. Looks like it's going to Austin for the second straight year. Garland's punt fielded at about the 10 yard line. No fair catch taken by Reggie Smith and he takes a whack by Michael Griffin on the punt team. Brandon Braxton sophomore out of Youngstown Ohio. Uh, Ursuline High School. That's in 2004. Then you go back and they had guys that weren't quite as big that played football there back in the day. Oh boy. Look at that. Ursuline High School's finest. Class of 56. They like that crew cut. You like that, Grease. That's a good look. Huh? <laughs> and there was no, you know, wax or anything in those days. That well, was just it. That was hair. Bob Stoops is a Youngstown guy as well. He's not a happy coach today. We will tell you that much. Yeah, is out to about the 11 is Alan Patrick. And we're down to two minutes 
You can probably see in the stands all the burnt orange has stayed in and most of the crimson and cream has become white and blue seats here at the Cotton Bowl. There's a pretty good picture for you. That's the 50 yard line. There's where the line was drawn. And the Oklahoma fans are heading out to the fair or they're heading back to Norman to regroup for another day. Norman is actually closer than this. Closer to Dallas than Austin is by about seven miles, which is kind of strange. With the Red River going right down the middle. That's why it's the Red River rivalry. Bob, you want to draw the river for us? Can't wait to see this. This there is beautiful. Go. Look at that drawing of the Red it's River. Flowing right downhill towards Paris. There's Norman. Yeah. Austin's 197 miles south of Dallas. So there's your Red River rivalry. And Norman's about 190. 190. Seven that, miles difference. That drawing you just did there, Brad, he, he worked on that for almost an hour up here. Just he couldn't find the Red River. He's the master <laughs> telestrator. Third down yeah. and three. Oklahoma down to their last hopes. Going to take a miracle. Thompson in trouble. Now he's got a lot of room to run on this side. Balls across the 30, showing his speed. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 42 with a nice gain, but only a minute 33 remaining. 26-yard rush for the Oklahoma quarterback. It's been tough for Bob Stoops uh, the last uh, six, eight months with the quarterback, Red Bomar, uh, having to suspend him and then going to another quarterback. Was he going to go? The other only guy he had on the team was a guy, a uh, junior college guy that came in in the spring, a guy named uh, Joey Housley. Mm -hmm. And then he said, well, I, I go to Paul Thompson. He's a vet veteran. He's a senior. All the players love him. Stoopy said it's, he's the most he's most respected guy I've had here in the eight years that I've been here. That says a bunch. He's in trouble in the pocket right now. And he's running out of it again and gets across the 50 before and Bobino runs him and out he's of bounds. Done a, he's done a pretty good job. There's been a lot of times where he's had receivers open where he hasn't hit them. And then, of, of course, you know, the little things. It's just the little things. You don't you know, you don't you don't play quarterback for a long time and you just lose some of it. Bob Stoops today not happy with the officiating, not happy with the replay officials. And I'm not sure I blame him. There were two calls. One was a pass interference call on the tight end, Finley, that was a big gainer. And that was a little bit questionable. And here's the ball thrown and intercepted by Aaron Ross. Ross with two interceptions and a return of a fumble for a touchdown. And that seals it for Texas. You know, you're not making excuses for either one of these two, especially Texas, but Oklahoma, when you look at their football team, they're really young. Their offensive line that you brought up at the beginning of this game, Bob, is so young and how good they're going to be. But the question is, to continue on what we're talking about, what do they do next year for a quarterback? Well, they got to find a quarterback. Well, Joey Halsley will be a junior. And they've got Sam Bradford, who is a true freshman this year. And that's all they've got on the roster. Well, Texas now is in the driver's seat in the Big 12 South. As all they have to do is take a couple of knees and head to Austin. A happy group and a happy higher than seventh ranked team in the nation by Monday. As they'll move up with Auburn having been beaten today. And Texas was impressive. Their defense really came out in the second half and played very, very well. And while Adrian Peterson got his 100 yards, now that's about all Oklahoma got. And the schedule for Texas now as you start to look ahead. Baylor, then at Nebraska. That won't be so easy. It's Texas Tech's a tough trip. Tough month. Oklahoma State, Kansas State, not an easy place to play. Then it's A&M on Thanksgiving weekend and then the Big 12 championship if they get to that point. At Nebraska and at Texas Tech. Back to back weeks, a little bit tough. Colt McCoy, the growing up of a quarterback happened right here at the Cotton Bowl. Our Chevrolet players of the game is Matt.